in the head. So he described this verse. And within Gopi Gita, the Gopis are glorifying the lotus feet of the Lord four times, 19 verses. Four verses out of 19 verses are glorifying the lotus feet of the Lord. So Lord Lotus is an unlimited, unlimited glories. We can have a whole seminar on that of the signs of the signs, the sign, the, the indication, the symbols which are there on the feet of the Lord. So first and second canto are compared to those lotus feet. And the benefit which were gained by meditating on the lotus feet of the Lord, same benefit one can drive by studying first canto and second canto of Shiva Bhagavad. Shiva Bhagavatam first canto is also more special because this was a canto which was translated by Shiva Prabhupada in India before he left for his mission in the West. So this was his preparation material. This was the masses through which he, he went to the Western world to transform the West. And most of these purports are written in the room of Shiva Prabhupada at Sri Sri Radha temple. Shri Prabhupada called Radha Damodari Temple as the hub of the universe. So, sitting in those rooms, you know, meditating on the commentaries of many, many religious acharyas, reading them, contemplating on them, and then speaking in a way that to make it all relevant for all of us for 10,000 years or so. And by the blessings of Sri Rupa Goswami, so this is a meditation of Shri Prabhupada. He has not yet seen the Western world. He has not been, he has not met even a single Western person by being in India. But still, he is writing in purpose in a way that will create a revolution in the entire world. <laughs> oh, this is just amazing. <laughs> because the way we know Shri Prabhupada is more after his tablets is gone. That's how we know the glory is more. But this is a period of deep meditation. And by the mercy of the Goswami writing with purpose. And then to print these purports was a great challenge. The Prabhupada had absolutely no money. Somehow wrote, somehow typed it on some papers. That time the printing was also very primitive, very mechanical compared to now what we can do layout, auto corrections, editing, soft copy editing. That time it was not like that. So I think everything has to be typed by typewriting. So it was tough, and every letter has to be arranged for printing, the printing press. Not just in typewriter, the typewriter, printing press was a bigger one than the typewriter. Every letter has to be arranged in that printing. Now it happens in a much more sophisticated way. So, so this was a very challenging task, and Shri Prabhupada had no money. So he went to Gorakhpur to meet Sri Hanuman Prasad Puddhanta. And he was the first one to give a donation of 5,000 rupees. And then, first volume. First part of first canto was printed like this. As far as I remember, it was having kept in chapter number six. We are we have to read from the first version of Prabhupada's first part of Shri Bhagavatam being printed. And the seventh and eighth chapter were part of second volume. So this is very, very special. And Prabhupada is not writing a you know academic or a scholarly commentary in the sense of not analyzing that the words or the grammar so much, which is also wonderful, but he's is pouring out his compassion of how the hearts of the conditioned souls can be transformed, how they can come closer to Krishna, how they can you know, walk on the path of attaining love for Krishna. So these, all of these purposes are dipped in this you know, purple heart of compassion. The very, very special purpose, very special section. So we'll start uh, this Chapter 6, just a prelude, we already covered Chapter 5. I believe there were two sessions already in the third section. Third unit. So somebody can summarize the first unit, what happened in the first unit, who spoke to Paul Martin. I think Bhavata more like a visual thing rather than an academic written what happened. I mean, we study so much. Studying Shiva Bhagavatam 12 centers is like two semesters of school. Literally. Six subjects, two books a week. Yes. But still, sometimes we pass decades and decades in Krishna without reading. 
So, Shri Vyasadev is offering that Mangala Charan. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudeva Janmadas. After that, the scenes shifts where the sages of Namish Adina, they are trying to perform a yagya, they gather together and shift. And then one day after performing all the ritualistic activities, they inquire from Sutta Goswami. And so Sutta Goswami is the head of the assembly. And Shwanagnishi is representing the entire assembly. Shwanagnishi is asking question on behalf of the entire assembly, Sutta Goswami. And there they inquire from Sutta Goswami about what is most beneficial for the you know, people of this age. They give the easiest possible way which people can do. They ask how many questions? Six, six questions. Six questions. Six. Question by the same. So, so those six questions I should be remember and remember the answers. <laughs> they ask about the process of bhakti, ask about the incarnation. And so the Goswami duly is replying to them. So the second chapter is entitled as Divinity and Divinity and Divinity and it's a very wonderful chapter, just like a seed. The entire Bhagavatam, all the narration, all the pastime, they can be seen in the light of second chapter of first chapter. Because there's a process of bhakti is being tested. So I'm sure that you all read from Shri Vishwanath commentary on how it is referring to different stages of section. Mm -hmm. And the Prabhupada was so much convinced of the process that he's putting the verses of this chapter at certain places, several places, especially in his prayer. But this, this is like giving in the seed form. The blueprint is given. This is how the process works. So all that is being explained here. And then Sarukova from extracted that Nana and And he gave this verse with an act of devotion. How this? Allah should that do, they might work. So there's a little elaboration here in this chapter, and then further examples are given which correspond to the entire process. So one has to see the life of any great personality, any sadhaka, it will fit in this viewpoint. And then the third came to is the restriction of scheduled incarnations. How many incarnations are? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. 20, 20, 22. And then next verses. This is the Parivashas. Starting a lot of questions. And after that, at the end of the uh, third canto, Sutta Goswami glorifies Shiva Bhagavad. Glorifies Vyasadeva and uh, Parishit Maharaj, Sukhda Goswami. And he says at the end of the third chapter, that I heard this. I think at the Lord of Sweet Talk, okay. so the And uh, I heard with rapt attention. So when I saw that, that makes an important point. He said that Sutta Goswami is reciting Bhagavatam, but there's no mention of Sutta Goswami interacting with Sukhda Goswami ever in the entire scene. Mm -hmm. Only Dr. Like Maharaj asking question. Mm -hmm. Sukhda Goswami did not ask any question. Okay. Sukhda Goswami was not even noticed by Sukhda Goswami that he was there. But, uh, so there are so many people in the assembly who are able to say it. But this is the power of submissive harmony. Yeah. That one feels connected to the spiritual master and they see the multi the spiritual master through the process of yeah. submissive and attentive hearing. That's how Sutta Goswami became so empowered to recite the entire Bhagavatam again to the sages of Nevitari. The process of empowerment works through the process of submissive hearing. You do not have any personal interaction, that's all. For the reference. For the personal interaction is not desirable, but it's just reference, you know, he gave this reference, just for taking it here. So, so then the sages became inquisitive and they asked, you know, oh, when this uh, Shiva Bhagavatam was compiled, how was it compiled it, how did it teach Sukhudeva Goswami? We heard that Sukhudeva Goswami was such a great sage, he did not use to stay more than the time it takes to. Milk cow. Not that he was waiting for the milk. He was preaching <laughs> at that time. Except in charity and go. And how Parishit Maharaj, how did he come to the bank of Ganges, leaving his duties as a king? 
although one will very renounce, but one should not renounce the duties which are beneficial for the people in general. So how does that, what is the setting? How does all this happen? They are very curious. So the fourth chapter begins by this curiosity of the sages. I mean, inquire. And that chapter is entitled as Vyasa's Research. So, so then, uh, you know, again, Sula was coming up his picture, and then he starts the story how Vyasa is sitting at the bank of Saraswati River, how he's meditating on doing the beneficial work for the entire humanity, how we divide the one Veda into four parts, and he wrote Mahavarat, and after doing all that, he satisfied. Shamaya, very totally dissatisfied. And, uh, you know, in Kaliga, dissatisfaction has become very common. Nobody worries too much about it. Sabku Dora dissatisfaction. But for sages, dissatisfaction was a serious issue. So, that's they became very, very concerned. What is the cause of dissatisfaction? In fact, one of the symptoms, not that it is the final or the only symptom, but one of the symptoms of somebody practicing bhakti nicely, well situated, is that he felt satisfied. Somebody asked me a question, how do you know when you dress a deity, you don't know whether it did well, it is an athlete. There's only one of us told that. You, you, you feel satisfied, you can understand. This is not, again, not the only criteria, but one of those things. One feels satisfied. So, please, that means, when I serve the Lord, then. the mind is not disturbed at this. One of the symptoms, not. This is the bad part because we may be in different modes and we may feel satisfied and dissatisfied with different things. But one of them is so we are just quite dissatisfied and he tried to find a reason. And he's, he thought of it maybe I have this I've glorified in Kalm and another kind of soul and I'm not properly glorified the Lord. He, he could detect it, but he was not sure. So then the fifth chapter, Narodhani arrives, Narodhani's instruction to the other. And then Immediately, Narodhani, as a guru usually does. So, like, Vyasa is asking, inquiring from Narodhani, is telling him that you have done so much and still you're feeling dissatisfied because just by identifying the, the self with the body or the mind, you cannot be satisfied. People in general are already inclined to sense gratification, and now you have given them license to become literature. So, how will they feel satisfied? The only way to feel completely satisfied is by engaging in the Devotion to the Lord. So you're not glorified in Supreme Lord sufficiently and exclusively. In this way, he says, and then he tells his own story as, as a matter of thinking that how the process of bhakti works. So that chapter is a, again, the, in a way, is a demo. It's a solid example for what the formulas which are told in chapter number two. Sustro Shro Shadu Dharasha, Vastu Devas, Kyan Maha Sevaya Vipra. That is the principle. How do you get the taste for doing devotional service? By associating great serving it. So Naramuni tells about this first time. How Vajjidandas came during the month of Chaturmas, and then he served them with his mother, and they bestowed his mercy upon them. He took Mahaprasada by their permission. And then he got a taste for hearing in their association. He got fully enlightened. He got attached to them and he got attached to the God. The, the, the purpose of association with great souls is attachment to them and through them attachment to the Supreme Source. And the genuine spiritual master through his Vani, he makes the disciple attached to Supreme Lord by revealing the glories and mercy of the Supreme God. So it all happened to Narada Describe in detail. Entire thing. You can like calibrate it. Second chapter, you can read down the verses from Shraddha to Pray. And in the fourth chapter, when Narmun is telling all about himself, then you talk by hearing from them, by knots of the modes were cut, I feel enlightened. So it's a very good comparison of the stages so far. So this is what has happened till now. And now today we are moving ahead. This is the last chapter, conversation between Narada and Vyasa. Tomorrow we'll meet Ashwatthama and Pandavas. Tomorrow we'll enter into Mahavara. <laughs> the very loaded, very beautiful, very interesting chapters. No clue how to do things in time. <laughs> it's still time.
So let's decide this first well. So after that, we decide on the selective well. Okay? And uh, you can read one by one translation as it comes. And I will explain the purpose a little bit for elaboration. So we pray. Suta Uvachana, Suta Uvachana, Eva Tutta said, O oh Brahmanas, thus hearing all about Sri Narada's birth and activities, Vyasudev, the incarnation of God and son of Satyavati, inquired as follows. So Sudha Goswami is telling whom? Whom is talking to? Shonagari. So now Vyasudev has heard and is very inspired by hearing the spiritual master's appearance and activity. He's only a disciple in Vyasa Puja time. We discussed so many of the parts. We read the books about the spiritual master, how they embrace the path of the Shagam. So naturally, it says Parambo. So Shri Prabhupada says, Vyasdev was further inquisitive to know about the perfection of Naraji, and therefore he wanted to know more about him. So already this is read in the last chapter. As I've heard from Narada, what happened when he met the sages, and then the sages went. But he wanted to know what, what that happened. So now he will put a question. So in this chapter, Narada will describe how he was able to have a brief audience with the Lord, and uh, how the Lord instructed him. Not read all the words. Read the translation. Previous they've said. What did you, Narada, do after the departure of the great sages who had instructed you in scientific transcendental knowledge for the beginning of your present birth? So he is telling the story of his past life. Last life I was the son of maid service, but he has not connected the dots. He told what happened last, how he got enlightened, but he has not yet revealed that how he began. So whereas they were very attentive, whereas they were asking. This is the first question he is asking. What did you do after the sages and depart mm. before the beginning of his empire? And uh, the Prabhupada says, Vyasa himself was a disciple of Naraji and therefore it was natural to be anxious to hear what Narada did after initiation from the future master. He wanted to follow him, Narada put his step in order to attain to the same perfect stage of life. The desire to inquire from the spiritual master is an essential factor to the progressive path. And this is what Saddharma. So this is one of the five most important or the first five items of Bhakti. Adho Guru, Adashri. Then Siksha, Diksha, Then Saddharma. one of the five. Inquire from the spiritual master. So this being inquisitive about you know, the devotional service is a very, very important factor, important for it. But as somebody asks, we don't get so many questions. We may not get questions, but then if we are attentive and interested in hearing others' questions, that also it gives you the same mind. Everyone may not get questions. But some will get questions, and no one will get questions. Some are empowered to ask questions. <laughs> so we can appreciate that and hear that. <laughs> Right, the same way. But uh, inquisitiveness is very special. That will be pretty part there, no? Pari Prashtrains. Pari Prashtrains. We inquire after rendering service and after going down. After humble surrender and so rendering service, Pari Prashtrains. And Shiva Bhagavatam from the beginning is Pari Prashtrains. Right from the beginning. Mm -hmm. Sonagadi Rishi to Sudha Goswami, Vyadev to Narodhuni, Kalishit Maharaj to Sudha Goswami. It's all Pariprashin. In Bhagavad Gita, you find Arjuna doing Pariprashin. Spiritual life, spiritual association, spiritual you know, Sangha, this is about Pariprashin. 
October, right? And that one of the famous her put that everyone is inquiring. Mm -hmm. Different people inquire about different things, businesses and students. What else kind of nature people have? But Atato Brahma Jigyata, that is the most important question. So Vyasa was the inquiring on his future master Narabhani Vat. Uh, here uh, Bhakti Vedanta is uh, they only like kind of uh, give some knowledge to Narada boy. No? They give the process. Process of knowledge. That's they give it. Basically, they were Shiksha Gurus. Yeah. They initiated also. They initiated also like that. Didn't mention. Actually, they gave the Shiksha, but as we discussed so much, you know, that in the path of Bhakti, Bhagavad Vidhi. Bhagavad Vidhi is based on Shravanam Kirtana. So in Bhagavad Vidhi, Siksha is most important. Now, Diksha, technically, Diksha is considered the giving of Gayatri Mantra, Diksha. Mm -hmm. Technically, mm -hmm. Diksha Mantra. This is now a Bodhi name. The process of chanting the name does not require any Purushagya or any technical process, Diksha, Purushagya. It does not depend. But the holy name is a special arrangement of the Lord that by chanting the holy name, one can attain the Highest perfection. But traditionally, and in a you know Vedic context, Diksha has been a very well-known system. That Diksha was offered to Brahmana, Chatriyas, and Vishyas through the awarding of the Brahma Gayatri. The Brahma Gayatri will kind of allow them to perform the sacrifices because without Brahma Gayatri, one cannot perform sacrifices. So that was the system, and that was given as per Guna and Karma. But later on, it became the caste system. It was mm -hmm. given in the caste. It became the culture within uh, politics. So one may receive Diksha through these mantras, or one may not. But the Holy Name is the most important. But in this case, the optional Bhagavad, most of the time it is referring to Diksha. They gave the mantras. They gave mantra to Nana Mahatmadi. Nalamani will do that meditation in this chapter later. So they did give Diksha also along with Siksha. Now, because in our response scenario, Siksha, Diksha, Harinam, that is a little bit distinguished. So in our scenario, we are chanting the holy name and we are receiving Siksha. About Siksha is what the essence of Siksha is how to avoid the kind of offenses. That is the Siksha. At the heart of Siksha. Because Niraparada Namaloy. But somebody should start how to chant without But Siksha is typically Diksha. And there is a system of Diksha because Diksha is the formal way by which we can express our commitment or surrender to them. Like, they both have their roles, Prabhupada has written more details in Chaitanya Chaitanya about both. He knows that, but at the same time, Diksha has its own importance. And we call it first and second. Essence should be understood. Essence lies in the surrender of the heart. Actually, Prabhupada 1922, we met with Guru. Formal initiation happened in 1923. But then he said, in my first meeting only, I accepted him as my... And I was always meditating on how can I serve. So that's most important. And Kaliga getting attracted and getting distracted by externals is very, very common. Why do you want something? Because he's getting, he's getting. Why do you want something? Because I'm eligible for it. So these are very commonplace things. And being an institution, you know, we cannot do away with these things fully. But individually, why should we focus on this? Institutionally, what is it? So, so it looks like that he did offer, Bhaktivedanta offered initiation to him in terms of giving him the diksha. That's how he could meant it. So, what is this sunset different uh, that Shiksha Guru's can be made? It's said, but uh, it's also said that Shiksha Guru term is not an ordinary term, it's a heavy term. Also said it can be, uh, Shiksha Guru's can be many. So, what exactly qualifies the Shiksha Guru? That's... According to Shila Krishna's Kavira Goswami, Chaitanya Chaitanya Adi Dibara, Chaitanya two or three of them, the two masters. So, from his perspective, he says that Shiksha Guru, Diksha Guru, both are at the same platform. Diksha Guru is one who gives mantra in the air. So, 
coming in the parampara like this. At Siksha Guru give teachings. They will teach different aspects of devotional service. Like for example, Shiva Ramanita, he received mantras also from Punjab. But he learned Ramayana from Sri Shala Bhuvan, learned something from Gosti Bhuvan. He received mantras also. So in Shastra, he said, Diksha is one, one who gives you mantra. Punch some scholars are there in the Diksha. Uh, mantra is there, the name is changed. Pentimala is given, Tilaka is given, and uh, five Yagyajan, the five sons of And Siksha Guru, after the, I mean, in consultation with Diksha Guru, we learned the science of practice of devotion service from different personalities, from the spiritual master, the sanctioned, allowed. So they are Siksha Guru. Siksha Guru may be multiple. And they may have their own level of advance. Some Siksha Guru may be just teaching some basic things. Some Siksha Guru may be as advanced as the Diksha Guru. Both kind of Siksha Gurus are there. Or we can call them Path Pradarsha Guru also. But the Siksha Guru, according to Krishna Sivaraj Goswami, are, are as qualified as Diksha Guru. And many times Diksha Guru gives a pride Siksha. Because now in Ispana, you see every Diksha Guru gives lectures. Every Diksha Guru is enlightening it. They are not like like, for example, Narutunda Shakuru was initiated by Shri Lokanath Goswami. Shri Lokanath Goswami did not did any kind of training. That's why Jiva Goswami became Siksha. Jiva Goswami was as qualified as any other person. Similarly, Srinivasa said, he got initiation from Shri Gopal But he did not organize any training for the Siksha. Mm -hmm. So they, he put them under Jiva That time, sometimes, Diksha Guru will give that punch samskara, but will not train. Not teach the scriptures. Now, typically, Diksha Guru also give lectures, but they may also have some of their senior disciples or some of the trustworthy people whom they may appoint to give proper guidance to their disciples. So they're not contradiction or harmonized. In a sense, we should have one person who is accessible and whom we have, you know, trust to certain degree may not be that we trust him like a pure devotee, but we trust him as a, you know, well-situated senior who has good knowledge of Shastras, Sadhacha is good, and is our well -wish. So that whenever we get stuck up on the path of bhakti, and we have somebody to inquire, and then by his advice, by his discussion, we can go. Otherwise, you know, by having too many people, too many discussions, also we don't come to. So, somebody whom we can trust more than our mind and be accessible. Mm -hmm. That much is we have, we are safe. We have a lot of knowledge, a lot of books, a lot of people, but then we have no one whom we can trust more than our mind, then we are very answer. Somebody. Not that we are saying he's a pure devotee, he also get distracted, but at least at this point of time, he has good knowledge of his teacher, reasonably good knowledge. He has good behavior, so that is very important. He's our well wisher, he knows us, he has feeling for us, and he is available, accessible. Because Guru is there, but this is the reality in our society that you know, we cannot approach Guru for very small things now and then. So somebody who one can approach for discussion. And now one is a crossword whether I should do this or I should do that. <laughs> because the important thing is Mahat Kripa Binar Pano, Karma Bhakti Nai, Krishna Bhakti Dure Rao Kantarvi. So, Mahatkarpa is required. So, that Mahatkarpa comes in parampara. Somebody we can discuss. I'm not saying that we take instruction. Instruction is spiritual masters of Brahma Kirti. It is not. Prabhupada instructed us for following the four regular principles, standing section of attentive. That's what all we take. Other than that, even the spiritual masters also give kind of open guidance, open suggestion. We do like this. This is a pros and cons. You know, we do just like that. Even the spiritual masters. So here, go to Vrindavan and do two Vrindavan Parikma, then go to Govan and do three Govan Parikma every day for the rest of the life. Nobody is there. And only say, Prabhupada said, chant 16 rounds, follow for every principle, read his books, distribute his books, chant 25 rounds on certain days. Follow the principle. Not too many things. Contractual is good. It's all about it. So this accessibility is an important part, and then everything else will be revealed because ultimately you have to understand that Krishna, who is the Chaitya Guru, is there within the heart. 
That chapter guru one is working through everyone. Siksha guru, Diksha guru, Patmudarsha guru, Avanti Brahmana, that's 24 gurus. Avanti? But because he could see that Krishna is guiding me through all these objects and all these people. You are not Diksha Guru. So the entire creation, everyone and everything becomes our Guru. And this is the right attitude. And this is the attitude of a disciple, then everyone is. No problem, no contradiction. So the Sardhan Paksha inquiring about the process and about personality is very important. Okay, next one. Hello, Gipo Sana Brahma. How did you pass your life after initiation? How did you attend this body hang with your old one in due course? So there's a second question he's asking. What did you do after initiation? How did you attend this body leaving that old one? He was an ordinary maid servant son, and now he become transformed into the spiritual body of eternal life with and all. So we have desired him to disclose the facts for everyone's satisfaction. Oh, oh, great sage, time eliminates everything in due course. So how is it that this subject matter happened prior to this day of Brahma? It is still fresh in your memory, undisturbed by time. <laughs> Important thing, eh? because Arjuna also asks a similar thing to that uh, we are all contemporary, then how do you, how did you instruct this to? Sun God was. So, so similarly, he's asking the time annihilates everything. So, how is it that it happened in the last day of Brahma and it's still fresh? Prabhupada says that the spirit is not annihilated even after the annihilation of the metal body. So, also, spiritual consciousness is not annihilated. Whatever little spiritual consciousness we Develop that does not get annihilated with the annihilation of the body. So he has developed the spiritual consciousness in the previous kalpa, and uh, that was not destroyed because it was a spiritual consciousness. It does not get destroyed by time. So, but defines reality. Reality is the existence that cannot be annihilated. That is real. Real means it cannot be destroyed by the effect of time. That is real. Anything that can get affected by the effect of time is not. Yeah. So, the spiritual body, the spiritual consciousness does not get hampered by time. That's why it remains it. So, now Naramuni is uh, replying. Okay, let's just read. Narada Vacha, Narada Vacha, Vilga Pravasiti. Vigyana Deshtum Dhirmama Vigyana Deshtum Dhirmama Vartamano Vesa Adde Vartamano Vesa Adde Patita Karasham Patita Karasham Tinarada said, Great sages who had imparted scientific knowledge of transcendence to me departed for other places and I had to pass my life in this way. So, and Sri Vishnu Thakur says that when the Manikin teacher would give me knowledge left, Pakshidanta, even though I was young, I did as they instructed. But etat akarasham. I performed my things, I did my sadhana as per what they instructed. So, Prabhupada writes very beautiful words that Narada was impregnated with special knowledge by the grace of the great sages. And this caused a tangible change in his life, although he was only a boy of five years. So this change in life, tangible change in life, is an important symptom visible after initiation by the bona fide teacher. So life changes when we come across devotees, especially when we get initiated. Actual association of devotees bring about a quick change in life for a spiritual realization. Actual association. That means there is another kind of association with this. 
not actionable. Not actionable. That will not bring about a quick change. That is a casual association, social association. Just for the sake of people come sometimes, they, they're not devotees. Sometimes people come for 5, 10, 20 years or so, and they know many people. But they're not actually associated. They're not getting thumbs. They know them. And they appreciate also. Actual association of devotees bring about a quick change in life for a spiritual realization. How it acted? That is just said by and by this chapter. Now he's telling about what happened in his life further. I was the only son of my mother, who was not only a simple woman, but a maid servant and well. Since I was her only offspring, she had no other alternative for position. She bound me with the tie of affection. So she had no other alternative, nowhere to repose her love and affection. Even if mother has many sons, it's still their affection to every child. But here she has no one, and even the husband is not known. No mention about his father. The mother was uh, showering all her affection on him and was also dependent on him. The son, na? Yes, you know, Buddha Pekka Lati. <laughs> dependent. But they take care of the child, and then the children are supposed to take care of that. So she was like that. She found shelter in this child. She was a woman, uneducated, meaning servant. Perfect. Yeah. She wanted to look after my maintenance properly, but because she was not independent, she was not able to do anything for me. The world is under the full control of the Supreme Lord. Therefore, everyone is like a wooden doll in the hands of a puppet master. So, one may desire many things, but actually because one himself is not independent, then one cannot do anything for yes, anyone. Independent. Everyone is fully under the control of the There are many, many instances Bhagavatam talks about this point very emphatically and repeatedly. Uh, later on, the chapter will become Dhritarashtra quits so After Dhritarashtra left from Vidrashtra Maharaj Lament, and then Narasimhi comes again. Narasimhi says, "Why Lamenti? Do you think you are protecting the trust? Do <laughs> you think you will die without me? You yourself are like a frog who is already there in the mouth of a serpent, and that frog is thinking of saving someone. <laughs> Sign. Everyone is in the jaws of Kala serpent. If you want to protect someone, but they don't have any control of their own life, a seventh going to Kala Mara also says to." Nursing there. But my dear Lord, parents cannot protect the child. And the boat cannot save a drowning man. And a physician cannot save the patient. If your will is not there, if your sanction is not there, then it can help. If Chitra Gitumaya, he wanted to protect the son, he was a king. He could not protect the son. And there also Naradmani and Giramani again come in. Put up Pravaha Yetaswin. This river of three modes is flowing and everything is changing. Who can take up? Bharat Maharaj wanted to protect the deer. But neither he could protect the deer, neither he could protect himself. There Shri Prabhupada writes this statement. As far as metal life is concerned, no one can do anything for anyone else. Very emphatic statement. Now, when we live in this world, it looks like that we are able to do something for someone, someone else is able to do something for us. This is because of lack of deep realization of how Krishna is invisibly controlling everything. If they are the one who are actually doing things, and if we are the one who are actually giving shelter, then why are we not able to do it all the time for everyone whom we chose? Why we are not able to do for everyone at all times? Why others are not able to do for us all the time? They have their wishes all the time. Can they do that? So because of not having, you know, developed so the and develop realization. It looks like they are able to do something for someone, others are able to do something. Actual thing is the world is under the full control of the Supreme Lord. Therefore, everyone is like a wooden dog in the hands of a puppet master. Okay. As far as metal life is concerned, destiny is very rigidly fixed. As far as spiritual life is concerned, that is up to oneself how intense the thing. This is so many words there. Pilat Maharaj is uh, teaching his uh, friends, telling that Yato Dukha Ya Yatata. So that verse is telling. 
So come, I am the come that time, they are your name, they are not. It comes. So as Brahmacharya, one has to have very deep realization, at least deeper understanding than this. So that's the one we're trying to learn by experience. <laughs> after you know, having a child, training the child, after that, they come to realization that the child is guided by the Lord, not by us. We try to learn. So they go through the path of experience, but they have to learn by the path of Shravan. Because otherwise, if you feel that we are the controller, we can do this, we can do that for us, for others, and the mind will be. So this is very important because for Brahmacharya, the parents are the great supporters of us. All of us. Some of the single sons. We are more worried than others. So we should do whatever is needful because somehow by Prabhupada's mercy in the society, even during Prabhupada's time, Prabhupada allowed uh, his disciples to take care of their parents. And he was very kind in behavior to the parents of his devotees. And times many of the devotees they didn't think to meet an incident like Brahman Prabhu and Karamani Godfather, she came. Prabhupada said, Two sons are taken nice care of. You should give some donations. So Swami I've already given my children. <laughs> <laughs> Giran Mahal's parents came, right? It was in India. So I told him, give him rasgullas. So I told Giran Mahal, you should eat rasgullas every day. <laughs> so like that, Prabhupada was very kind. So that is allowed, but at the same time, this philosophical understanding that ultimately the Lord is in front. Lord will do the best. And the faith, the Lord loves our parents more than what we can love them. Mm -hmm. And the Grasas need to have that understanding that their children are more loved by Krishna than what they can love. What is Guru Mahal's mother telling Guru? Mother's mothers. Millions of mothers like me cannot show that affection, cannot express that love. What? Children. That faith is very important. For me, this is a basic question. I feel I am upset. I mean, uh, sometimes the devotees uh, in our family want to become Brahmajari. The parents are not that kind of devoted to devotional service. So, out of affection, sometimes we visit to home and they are not ch chanting properly or one round, they may not be chanting. Uh, or then they want to cook for us. I mean, me, our. Then, in such situation, what is the ideal standard? Means, mother wants to cook. She will cook uh, without onion garlic. Once a while we visit. So that is allowed or not allowed. So it's allowed. The son can take, other rooms may avoid, but yes. son can take because she's cooking out of affection for son, although she may not be inspired by the spiritual aspect. She's inspired by the relationship what she has. So depending on whatever deep devotion we have for the father, according to that, they will also get the benefit of serving a son. Seeing as a son, not a son. But then, because we are trying to serve and please our spiritual master and Krishna, to whatever degree we are intense, to that degree, even a guest, without knowing, they will get the sukriti of serving a sadhu and they will get the blessing of So, to the degree we are pure, they get the benefit of serving a pure. And boys also. And Agya Sukriti will turn them into devotees eventually. And many of us can see over a period of time, parents just by serving, just by doing something. Even though they were upset and angry, very rare to find somebody who were very happy. Maybe your parents were okay. Well. <laughs> they were also upset. <laughs> they were upset for company. <laughs> and then his parents were very okay. They came and donated, take me something. <laughs> Even devotee parents, this is their speed of their growth is different, and growth is different. So it depends on their past life sukha and it depends on our prayers and our you know, sincerity. Because they are affectionate to us and if we are attached to Krishna, then they will also gradually become attached to Krishna. But they also have the freedom, this may not happen many decades, many years. So similarly, for children, when they are children of devotee parents, there's a good chance that they can take to devotee parents, but some children will not take. The children will be very nice in the childhood and teen, uh, all teenage comes and you don't you can't recognize them. It's, it's the same child who used to come and offer power to Prabhupada. Well, mm -hmm. 
ultimately every jiva has a choice. They have to make their conscious choice themselves. But by doing our bhakti very intensely, we give them the best. And because they connect to us as sun and they have done so much service for us, we are grateful to them, obliged to them. So within the bounded limits of regulative principles, we can you know, accept whatever affection we are showing them. Break the regulative principles, then, no. then it's second. But with the regulative principles, they want to cook, then you make an offering to this, that you give them the uh, credit cooking boba. You make that offering now, then you yeah. offer. So, okay, let's go to this. When I was a mere child of five years, I lived in a Brahmana school. I was dependent on my mother's affection and had no experience of different lands. So like a normal, ordinary five-year-old child is living in a Brahmana school and with no experience at all. Now, what happens? The situation turns. Once upon a time, my poor mother, when going out, one night to milk a cow was bitten on the leg by a serpent, influenced by a supreme time. Sarpanam Kalat Swarita. So the poor woman. Poor means even economically she was poor. But uh, she had the great fortune of serving the Bhakti Danta along with her son, as when she was good. But she could not take to the process. She was not infected by Bhakti Danta. She was written by the serpent, Kala Chodita, entered by the supreme time. Time factor is what makes the change. Time factor is what changes the situation. And these days, we can see so many, you know, children being raised by the parent with love and affection. They grow up, they fight over property, they can't keep the parent with them, they cheat the parent, they torture the parent. Same child who has come out of the womb of the mother is beating the parent. It's not very uncommon these days. The cheats. So it's very, very painful, but this is all the influence of time. Time changes everything. Time changes uh, newborn babies into kids and kids into teenagers, teenagers into grown up people, then they get married, they get children, old age, and finally take them to their parents. Time factor, I should very carefully observe how the time factor. Because time is a representative of the Lord in this world, Carlos Pia. This is the way of dragging a sincere soul nearer to God. Poor boy was being looked after only by his affection mother, and yet the mother was taken from the world by the supreme will in order to completely at the mercy of the Lord. Not easy. Now, Narayan is saying this was very good. Let's keep it here. I took this as a special mercy of Lord who always desires benediction for his devotees. And so thinking, I started for the north. So this was a mercy. This is what the, you know, special mercy. special mercy, this is what the result of initiation was. At the time of initiation, the spiritual master connects the disciple to the parampara and gives him that consciousness that everything what comes in a life by the grace of the Lord. That is the consciousness, that is the vision which the spiritual master imparts to the disciple. then we then that enlightenment, at least it is a Shastra Chakshu. But look everything from the perspective of scriptures and everything from the perspective of being it as Lord's grace. So initiation is a very serious responsibility and this is how it's conscious from a five-year-old boy. And a five-year-old boy is like this. Five-year-old is not a big age. But because of that multi-factor, five-year-old boy also could see the situation as of several importance. Sometimes we are 25, 30, 30, we are not able to see the situation like that. He could see it. So this was the special mercy of the Lord that he could see it as the special mercy of the Lord. Say, considering the death of my mother and the mercy of the Lord, I departed to the north. He did so without performing a 
Confidential devotees of the Lord see in every step a benefited direction of the Lord. What is considered to be an odd or difficult moment in the mundane sense is accepted as special mercy. You see, these are the toughest period of Shri Prabhupada. So what is writing? He has a deep sense of energy from that. Because this is 19, you know, 60, 62, this area. At that time, the China war going on, people not available. There's no money for him to live, He's wearing torn clothes, cooking once in a day, going to Delhi, third class train. I could print it's very tough because see Lira Madam, this is like one of the toughest period. No follower, no support, no god brothers, no family members. And he wrote that Vrindavan Bhajan also, no? that all my family members, they are just a list of names. <laughs> so he's writing that what is considered to be an odd or difficult moment in the mundane sense is accepted as special with Guru Sakis. Today is grateful because he's getting to serve his people. Mundane prosperity is a kind of metal fever, and by the grace of the Lord, the temperature of this metal fever is gradually diminished, and it will have this after its temperature. Mundane people misunderstood. He was expressing his heart that maybe people are thinking in Nudra, but actually he is feeling that satisfaction of serving his people. So now he will uh, pass through different places which are being described. Uh, so you can read. After my de departure, I passed through many persons, metropolises, towns, villages, animal farms, mines, agricultural lands, valleys, power gardens, nursery gardens, and natural forests. So everything was there at all times. The purpose is that, uh, you know, Man's activities in agriculture, mining, farming, industry, gardening are all on the same still as they are now, even previous to the present creation. And the same activities will remain as they are even in the next creation. So history repeats itself. The universe, the history of the universe repeats itself practically in the same way. Nothing much changes. When Srila Vasudhya prayed, the Lord immediately liberated and took back to home, back to God, and all the souls which were there in the planet at that time. And immediately everyone else would recreate. In the same situation. Everyone seemed to be doing the same thing. But still repeated itself. And it happens also. <laughs> that, like, you know, whether they go to go to train, train uh, railway station or go to post office, go to bank, things seem to work in the same way. There are queue, there are token. Earlier they used to call token number five, I and mean, now they will display token number five. To fill the form, nothing changes irrespective of the situation. Something will become electronic, but purpose is the same. So, the mundane language wastes time with archaeological excavation without searching into the vital necessities of life. There's a whole archaeological survey of India, there's a whole department, ASS, and they do research, and there are thousands of people employed. And they are like having the small things, and they're layer by layer taking the earth out and understanding what is there, fossil is there. Rafa is there, Mondezaro is there, what <laughs> they don't know. <laughs> you will also get into this layer. <laughs> so, nothing changes it. After getting embedded in the future life, Narada Muni, all the military did not waste time for a single moment with economic development, although in past towns and villages, mines, and industries. He continually went on to progress with future emancipation. She was Baba the reputation of history which happened 200 million years ago. One of the most important factors of history are picked up to be recorded in the start of the So I should not be so much fascinated by the world history or you know, history of one's own nation, or history of one's own state. It keep on happening. It keep on happening. Now, COVID, during COVID, it was such a thing with how it happened now. It's kind of locked down with more than a few, even during the war, and it's just did not happen. Every day we were seeing statistics with Nigerian people who are Chicago people who are going to learn with them. You know, it's a whole chart. Whole chart. Every nation of the world was there in that chart. <laughs> but who cares? Can anyone stop it? Does it matter in any So today's world of social media, it's just that it makes unnecessary information 
as something very vital. People just waste their vital you know, effort and time. Um, they're not required. And devotees and devotees will be very, very careful. Because the world has a set pattern of working. It will keep on working in the same way. Rulers will come, rulers will go. Parties will come, parties will go. Leaders will come, leaders will go. Everything is in a flux. And who is controlling it? Not the people. It's the power of the Supreme Lord who's controlling it. I often share when I was reading 8th Canto Shem Bhavan, the title is Manavanta. Manus are destroyed. So it is very striking to see that entire day of Brahma, the management is fixed. One day of Brahma, the 14 Manus are fixed, 71 Devi Yugas. And within each Manavanta, Indra is fixed. The Saptarishis are fixed, the Manantar Avatars are fixed, and uh, the Manuputras, like six things are fixed, the cabinet is fixed. So much is fixed at that level, and here we are in a tiny speck of dust. The entire planet Earth doesn't look like a speck of dust in the entire creation. Go and form like that. And that cosmic manifestation to one universe within that one universe. It's just the fifth kind of come to that. The earth is not more than a particle of dust. So much is there. Such huge things. And that particle of dust, what is happening in that particle of particle of dust? <laughs> we are so much worried. We will become empty, we will become MLA. <laughs> so we can still do our duty. I'm not against doing our dharma and our duty. But it's not worth contemplating, discussing, investing. What to do? Such dharma praksha, not this praksha or whatever. Whatever, whatever is our goal is once in a five years, you have to touch one button, get your heart. It has to be. Okay, sometimes we get that knowledge and we understand. So we give less importance to material activity. But when it comes to spiritual activity, in, term, in the name of preaching, there are so much uh, competition, you know, subtle or gross, is seen in the name of preaching, in the name of services, because it is for Krishna. One duty thinks it's for Krishna, one duty is it's for Krishna. So this, <laughs> this thing comes up uh, again that imagery is against yes, That's why if my. Reading a scripture deeply and my work on contemplation, I should become very sober. No one, you see, that's like now we are in devotee communities, so our purification will come through devotees. Outside people, we are not in touch with outside society. Our challenges will also come from devotees. Not every devotee is of same quality. So, you know, we should know that. Whatever will come in our life, whatever opportunities will come, they all be provided by Krishna. No one can. And for that, neither of our subordinate, neither of our superiors. If Krishna wants us to engage in some service, you want to award us some service, you know, through thousand people, you can come to us. One of our way will come. And if Krishna does not want us to do something, then even if you want to do something simple, there will be thousand obstacles. How do we know that? How do we tell the faith to do that? For that, we have to do our sadhana process. Sadhana is a personal connection to Krishna. Not from Krishna's energy, it's connection to Krishna. The holy name is Krishna, now Avatar. Sri Bhavata is Krishna, Granth Avatar. The deity form is Krishna, Vigraha, Archa Vigraha. Mm -hmm. So these are ways in which Krishna personally comes. Nobody can object them. Nobody can say, hey, chanting to Bani Harbar, Nena Nam Dikhari. No, no spirit can say that. We are directly chanting to Krishna. So the more we you know, engage and develop depth in our personal relation with Krishna, the more we will be able to see Krishna's hand in other indirect things which are happening now. But because we do not pay a proper attention and proper depth to the direct connection with Krishna to all these things which our Sri Master has given us, he instructed us. So then the indirect thing becomes very confusing. And we become caught up that this person is trying to obstruct my service, this person is competing with me, this person is trying to put me down. Actually, nothing in this universe are just now we saw everything in this world is controlled by the world. The devotees are not out of the control of the law. Somebody doing something in our life, that is also maybe his choice, but Krishna has allowed them to, them to speak to us harshly or to you know, put some obstacle in our way. So ultimately, we have to see Krishna's hand, and that requires training. And that will part of it is to first 
connect to Krishna directly through all these things. The more we connect to Krishna directly, then Krishna in our heart gives us that reason. How Narayana could see that as mercy of God? And any five year old boy see his mother's death as mercy of God. Because of mercy of the Bhaktivedanta, it is a part the process. So, history repeats itself. So that's the main thing, and one should not get too involved in the social affairs, political. It keeps on happening. Nothing new. Whatever has to happen, whenever it by that in another world. Lord knows the best. Same people are there. How in a country of 140 crore population, a foreign lady can be competing for the post of prime minister having, you know, India was 70 to 80 crore ladies. Still, a foreign important lady can be there as well. So this is all by the end of the law. <laughs> Otherwise, it's funny thing. Right? Pakistan, Bangladesh, Muslim ladies, Captain Burkha, they're quite subjugated. You see the Islamic tradition, the Muslim ladies are quite subjugated. But still, they have the prime minister. So, this is all happening as a Lord. It's not like, you know, nobody can calculate and say, he's a qualified person, he's a scholarly person. Lord chooses, it's like playing the chess. Lord chooses somebody and puts them into the Assembly hall and then puts him on the prime minister's seat, and then after three months he withdraws and puts him back in the box and then they're transported forever. Probably they try. Nobody knows where they are. It comes and goes. All these things keep on happening. Indras keep on changing, Man Manus keep on changing, you know, the Remigod Post keep on changing. So what's the big deal in these few seats here and there? You should not pay too much attention to that. These are not like something very heavy. Related. People look as if they are going to change the course of the world. That's why Shabakti and Rajiv are also emphatic. Politicians will come and go, politics will be. Doesn't matter. A lion will go, tiger will come. So one may do one's karma, one's duty one may do as per body. But one should not pay too much attention and too much time into all this. They are really not. The job, especially Brahmacharya. Brahmacharya is just nothing to do. That's the way I have to get from this. Okay, next. I pass through hills and mountains full of reservoirs of various minerals like gold, silver, and copper, and through tracts of land with reservoirs of water filled with beautiful lotus flowers, fit for the denizens of heaven, decorated with bewildered bees and singing birds. So he passed through mountains, gold, silver, pools of fresh water, lakes, all around. Then he saw a dense forest, which was a playground for snakes, owls, and tigers. I did not surprise or fear in seeing this surprising and fear something because my mind was absorbed in tasting the sweetness of the Lord at that time. We have already come to the level of play, my first election of the Apples. Especially Vishwanath in Thakur's commentary, Talamuni at the age of five has already attended them. That's why he is tasting the sweetness of the Lord and he must be able to go to the Lord in the heart. Rao was not even seeing the Lord in the heart, but he has so much confidence in the words of his mother that I will get the Lord in the forest. I mean, even today, if we are told that uh, sometimes we have seen a lion in this chakra, still we you know, will not look for the <laughs> I then passed through many forests of rushing bamboo, reed, chakra, reed scapes. I used to deep, dark, and dangerously fearful forest, which was the play yards of snake owls and things. So, but that's an interesting purpose. The duty of a mendicant to experience all varieties of God's creation by traveling. Alone, <laughs> all forests, hills, towns, villages, but to gain faith in God and strength of mind, right. enlighten and have it with the man. Three things gain faith in God, strength of mind, enlighten and have it. So, so Parvrajit Acharya. And so, for the sannyasi, duty bound to take all these risks without fear. And the most typical sannyasi of the present age is Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, who traveled in the same manner through the central Indian jungle, enlightening in the tigers, bears, snakes, deer, and 
in this manner, in this area of Kali, sannyas is forbidden for ordinary man. One who changes the dress to make propaganda is a different man from the original ideal sannyas. So now this line in I have to deeply contemplate. I'm not yet fully understood of the process. One meaning is one who changes the dress to make propaganda is a different man. That means one who takes sannyas for the sake of preaching, for the sake of gaining some preaching opportunity. Another meaning may be that one who changes the dress may be a yeah. hypocrite just for the means. Both may be there. One should, however, take the vow to stop social intercourse completely and devote life exclusively to the service of the world. That is about In, Stop social intercourse completely. That's what I mean. For and sentences, Change of dress on the formality, not just that did not accept the name of the sentence. And in this age of Kali, the so called sannyasis should not change their vow on this. In this age, devotional service of hearing and repeating the holy glories of the Lord is strongly recommended. And one who takes a vow of renunciation of heavenly life need not imitate the fervor of the like none of the Lord Chaitanya, but may sit down at some holy place and devote his whole life, time and energy to hear and repeatedly chant the holy scripture led by the great Acharya like the sixth of the Lord. So, by telling that although in the beginning he started, one should travel to all this track. <laughs> Or you know, preaching for gaining faith in mind, being the creation of the Lord. But then he said, this day and age, people are not qualified to take sannyas. Mm -hmm. So if somebody takes sannyas, one should avoid social intercourse completely and should do Shavana Kirtana nicely. And in our mission, when we take to take to life of a devotee in spa or from services. Then we travel and preach, but not alone and not through forest, you know. But we travel to places to preach because you know now jungles, cities have become concrete jungles, and the people who are devoid of Krishna consciousness are also having animalistic habits. Now. So even dealing with them is not easy. The habits are so different, and boys and girls together, it's like animal civilization. In the society where there's no restriction between free mixing of man and woman is compared to animal civilization. They have free free mix. Human civilization plus free mixing in science So, so one can preach, one can go for book distribution, quite an adventure. One will get all these three things, what Prabhupada writes here. One will get faith in God, one will get strength of mind, one will end right in the inhabitant, right? Going out to book distribution, going out to bus party, seeing different things. Sometimes villages are certain, sometimes they are. Yeah, the people in mm -hmm. sometimes they are aggressive. So what does all that? So what was happening by traveling alone in those days now is to travel with devotees for the sake of book distribution, especially book distribution is not different from following the sannyas dharma. It's same level of traveling, preaching, and like depending on Lord. <laughs> so so one can do that thing better rather than getting copying to something. We, uh, sometimes we hear that in initial days there were book distributors who used to distribute books, but they did not focus on sadhana. So they faced difficulties in old days and then that point come up. Yes. I hear in all of yes. So, so we, we do morning program when bus, we have full morning program in today, class. Class will be later because morning it will go up to this. Srila so Prabhupada has, has a, you know, tapped the potency for, you know, stability and advancement within the process he has instructed us. So, like in the olden times, you know, Ravana, he had Mahi Ravana, Ravana. So some say that there was an arrow. What's the name? What's that? Uh, in the class, Ravana. Uh, 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 there was an arrow actually in the palace of Ravana. Nobody knew that. That arrow only could skip Ravana. Ravana didn't move with the Jyotish. Ravana said, and then Mandurai died high. There in the Spilavana. Because that was the thing. No matter now what you do, but the key is there. Button is there. So similarly, Srila Prabhupada has put such heavy emphasis. Anybody attending morning program for 30 years, 
macam yang bawa tugas penting dia kalau itu kan ini nih program coba coba the form the time of the schedule it now big discussion is from where now to get it back and many big trouble happen Gita class also happen but at least I'm not Gita class Ronsi class is there because those days the training programs are not there main principle is of seven so anybody who does the morning program and Just extra shorter, one hour or two hours, one hour. Even if he does it mechanically, still he will not face any challenge. Problem is that mechanically it will not work for long time. So you need a taste to do that. So why hearing? In the class we hear, one has to hear attentively. In the class only we are hearing, one has to hear attentively. One has to be aware from distraction. So we we'll hear, right? And our hearing will improve. In the class only one is telling, one should chant nicely. So by hearing, then our quality of You know, attentiveness increases in different processes. So that's why participating in the program, and one minute I'm saying, the problem was not that these people distributed books. The problem was they deliberately, knowingly, you know, neglected their subject because of passion, because of lack of interest. So if that happens, then even without book distribution, within sitting in temple, also when the one is not attentive, still it will go away. <laughs> But if one is doing this part. Then one is doing book distribution. That will give a very powerful realization. Powerful. So we gain faith in God, strength of mind, and the third thing, the true enlightenment. Yeah. Yeah. All three. Yeah. Problem was not with the process. Problem was with the follow. They did not chant it the wrong way. They did not chant it. Not follow the process. We don't take the medicine. Then how we can be healthy? So somebody asked me, "Will you tell us about it?" Sometimes we see devotees, five, ten years, fifteen years, twenty years, they follow. Do you understand? Do you understand? This proves the scientific nature of the process. <laughs> That's all. Tell us about it. This proves the scientific nature of the process. You follow it, you are hearing. You don't follow the process, you are out. That's the science. If the time somebody follows, he's there. He said, "If it doesn't follow, then the mind and the senses are not allowing to do it." Right. One plays with the process. Follow the process. The process has the power. All the potency is building. So that's why one should not take it lightly. It is. Well, this beauty of the mind is means what exactly is it? Strength of mind. The strength of mind. The strength of mind means that the mind is able to say no to the temptation which are caused by the senses and by the sense of things, and the mind is able to focus on. ट्रैवल Felt, I felt tired, both bodily and mentally. And I was both thirsty and hungry, so I took a bath in a river lake and also drank water. By contacting water, I got relief from my exhaustion. So the glory of taking baths. So when Monday came, they meet the need of body, and they sense when they get the gift from nature, they are being a beggar at the door. And you can therefore does not go to the house of the two right and night at night. So now Narad Muni will do meditation. Section will change. So do we have break time? Is this or we can think? How do we do? Generally we have break. Generally. Yes. We generally we have break. But we had a break in the beginning only. I got late. Oh, we can maybe keep short. No, so what we'll do? Five minutes break. So, because those who are online, they don't need anything. They can take break. <laughs> All of you are sitting in AC, which is a blessing. <laughs> you can uh, go around for five minutes, and I will check my guys, and then I will come. <laughs>
So now, Narad Muni, I will read it less now because otherwise I'm not going to call the chapter. Actually, chapters are quite bigger than this one. You know, Gundi is like big chapter. Out of conversation. Up when everyone is held one a day, people are so fast with us. Atma, Atmana, Atmasta. Oh, in that place, which has been discussed previously, the deep, dense forest, and he came, he got tired, and took bath and drank some water. And came so he sat near a people tree, and there he started meditating on Kalmatma. How? Yatha Shutam. Achintayam. So, Yatha Shutam means as I had been taught, as I had learned from the related source. And so, as I had been taught. So, he followed the process of what he was taught. So, a person says, one should not meditate according to one's personal experiences. There are so many things about chanting, chanting or meditation. So, how to chant? So, has written that meaning of Hare Krishna Mahas. That is the basic foundation of all the Japa mm. You can memorize it verbatim. Everything else is covered in it. So, but you should try like a child. 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 The basic thing is what chanting is. Time call. The call for the Lord. Oh, Hare, what other one? He sings. He's the Lord. 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 He's yeah. And there are many other things you can have retreats, you can have seminars, further go deep. But this is the basic thing. This is what Shri Prabhupada taught us. There's a tape again. Prabhupada teaches this thing and he's recorded this. And he says the sound vibration is transcendental. That's why even a child can chant in this one. One should know perfectly well from the authoritative sources of scriptures through the transparent medium of a bona fide spiritual master. And by the proper use of one's trained intelligence for meditating upon the supersoul dwelling with it, happily living being. This consciousness is firmly developed by a devotee who has rendered loving service unto the Lord by carrying out the orders of the spiritual master. So, this consciousness arises in someone who is rendering loving service, mm -hmm. or will render loving service by carrying out the orders. So, when he started meditating, so as soon as he to meditate upon the lotus feet of the personality of Godhead, so his mind became transformed in transcendental love. He was sold down from his eyes and without delay the personality of Godhead which appeared on the lotus of the heart. So G.L. Shravishanjali Thakur says, the mind conquered by prema, the bhava devi, tears in my eyes, on longing, step by step, the Lord made his appearance to my mind. Shane, Shane, gradually mean that first he appeared in the heart, then he appeared in the three functions of the mind, nose, ear, and eye. Through nose, he could experience the fragrance of the Lord's body. Through ear, he could hear the ankle bus, and through eye, he could see the beauty of his face. So this is all of things. Prabhupada talks about the uh, stages of devotion service. He gives a whole synopsis here, saying that the bhava stage attained after one is attained, one is transcendental affection for the law. First, which is sadha or liking. Then, important thing is to increase that liking, one has to associate with pure devotee. Mm -hmm. That is where the quality of association matters. A pure devotee, there are pure devotees of attain prema. That is one category of pure devotion. But those who are aspiring for pure devotion service are also considered as pure devotees are their association also. But those who are distracted by so many other things within scorn, within Krishna consciousness, or within the society, 
Their association will not increase our liking, not enhance our liking. So one has to associate with pure devotees of the Lord. And that association can be through one. A physical or it can be through one by hearing their appreciation for the Lord. And then third stage is to practice the Tathya rules and regulation. And this, this is Bhajan Kriya, this will receive all misgivings and remove all personal deficiencies. That is another thing. Then, when all misgivings are removed, there is a standard faith. This is the stuff. It's a standard faith. This faith is based fully on scripture. At the stage of Nishtha, one is able to see every situation of life through the scriptural vision. Shastra Chakshu becomes very prominent, very clear at that stage. And then comes Ruchi. The taste increases in great proportion. Then comes Asakti, this will lead to attraction. And after that, there is Bhava. So then it's being so surcharged transition in love, there comes a strong feeling of separation. Which leads to eight different kinds of stress. Tears from the eyes of a devotee are an automatic reaction because in our movie, it is about to attain that state very quickly after his departure from home. It was quite possible for him to Perceive the actual presence of the Lord, which is tangibly experienced by his developed spiritual senses without material. Prema, they were near Vinna, Palakango, Anuk, Sampave, you know, Napasya, Hagoye. So he saw the Lord. Uh, at that time, being exceedingly overpowered by feelings of happiness, every part of the body became separately enlivened. Being absorbed in an ocean of ecstasy, I could not see both myself and the parts. His limbs were covered with distinct goosebumps to the excess of pain. All the limbs developed the symptoms of prema at that time. The goosebumps were erupting so much that the prema was difficult to see. Then fainted out of this Ananda Sampave Vina. I did not see myself for the Lord. So, this is the level of prema. To go from Madhuri Kadimri from Adar Shadda and Bhava Prema. <laughs> This is the highest stage there. After that, there are eight more stages. Prabhupada says, the spiritual feelings of happiness and intense ecstasy have no mundane purpose. And nothing like you can compare them with any mundane. Therefore, it is very difficult to give expression to such feelings. You just have a glimpse of such ecstasy in the words of Narada. Hmm. So, each and every part of the body or sense has a particular function. After seeing the Lord, all the senses become fully awakened. To render service unto the Lord, because the liberated state, the senses are fully appreciated in self. As such, in that transcendental ecstasy, so happens that the senses become separately enlivened from the Lord. That means what? Like the eyes, they want to continue to see the Lord. Mind is like seeing the Lord. And that the ears, they want to hear the glory of the Lord. Tongue wants to chant the glory. All is happening somebody, one is not knowing whether I should see, <laughs> chant, or hear. How many are there for the class? No, you are not there. How many of you gave a God for divine? In the Chamadi. That's not a There you are describing the ecstasies of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu on the remembrance of the Lord. The Chaitanya Mahaprabhu says that, uh, you know, my senses are like plunderers and my mind is like a horse. So the six plunderers have set on this one horse. And they are driving the horse in six different directions. So you can imagine how tough it would be, what the horse will do. So first of all, six people have sat on that. <laughs> and then now six are changing six different directions. This is the state of my mind. So this is advanced <laughs> state. What it means is that six senses are there. Six senses. Five senses. So they've all said five senses. They've all said, and they're all like, you know, Getting attracted to fish. I want to see the form of the Lord, the ears want to hear the voice of the Lord, the nose want to smell the fragrance of the Lord, the stuff of the Lord. All these five excesses are destroyed in the five last chapters of Antalila. Each of these five things are destroyed. In great detail. How Jatanapur and So then, and mind is one horse. So mind can be connected to one sense at a time. Mind can be connected to one sense at a time. That is why we say that the this concept of what is all that multitasking. So multitasking only when very distinct things are there. Actually, even when in distinct things, if one is really like completely absorbed oneself, it will be difficult to do. But then by training 
the mind then when they do some distinct thing where like sometimes say cleaning and hearing maybe but for that one has to first get trained in cleaning properly otherwise while cleaning also one not clean properly you don't get carried with you but if one has trained one self in cleaning properly then one may properly clean also maybe hear otherwise otherwise mind is asking very deep the mind is one mind get connected to one sense at a time so so that's why this senses become separately enlivened to solve the lots all the things So, transcendence of the Lord as it is satisfies the mind's desire and at once it is all mental. Of losing that form, I suddenly got up being further as the user when one loses that its desire. So, actual darshan of the attractive form of the Lord destroys all commentaries. There are again also a topic on the form of the Lord. <laughs> Beautiful form of the Lord. But when we talk of Param Dishwa and Nirvata, it actually refers to attraction to the form of the Lord. Param Dishwa, you see that. Param Dishwa, I see that. Because the most powerful sense are the sense of sight and sense of sound. You get attracted to even mundane thing, metal beauty by sound and sight. By sight and sound, even any any kind of beautiful movement or whatever. So when sight and sound is engaged in Krishna service, so the ears are engaged in hearing the harika, harika, and the sight is engaged in seeing the darshan. Now then one's mind can get totally absorbed. Even at this stage, maybe we may have our favorite kirtan singer like earlier they used to sing that dust of bhajan. You heard those kirtan? Dust of bhajan. And the fools. Yes. It was so absorbing. You know, play it and you know, lose sense of where you are or time it is. So it's all good. Or sometimes the Kalam Ganam are the Some of the last pieces. Same tune for 15 minutes, 20 minutes and same. What is that? Or different level is one of the songs. A similar sense of sight. You see Darshan of the Lord in this beautiful Archivigra form of and you observe the mind details and one find get up. So the impression of the mundane sound and the mundane sight is to be replaced by spiritual sight and spiritual sound. And that attraction towards the form of the Lord and towards the merciful nature of the Lord. Shri. In this uh, sixth Shad Aswarya, the whole foundation of the Shad Aswarya is Shri, the beauty. Our Lord is all beautiful. And uh, the Shri also means Vatsalya, that means all compassion. So these two things, compassion of the Lord and beauty of the Lord, they are the, you know, uh, things by which Lord attracts the conditions. And the, the proof is Sukadeva Goswami, Varaha Pridam Nathara Pukarni Gandhita. When he heard that, he became totally stunned in such beauty. And he became totally captivated with the beauty, but he was doubtful whether the true person, but what is his nature? So then he says, Aho Bhaktiya Mishra Gada Bhutam Jigante Ayo. Then you know, such beauty, such compassion, so the Lord attracts the beauty and upholds by his compassion. So Naramani saw that form, and by seeing that form, all lamentation was dissipated. And as soon as the form disappeared, he became very agitated. Like Dhruva could see the form, then the form disappeared. But for Dhruva, the form appeared outside. Naramuni is not big. Naramuni is Lord of another class. <laughs> so, that the Lord is not formless is explained by Naramuni, but his form is completely different from all forms of meditation. So, for the whole duration of our life, we go on seeing different forms in the material world, but none of them is just apt to satisfy the mind. Nor can any one of them vanish all perturbance of the mind. That is why you'll see that even if somebody, you know, is the most beautiful lady in this world, Whatever one. Still, the mind will not be said. Some person may be attracted to her, may get engaged or get an affair, but still, again, the mind will get attracted to another beauty form. They will have another affair. So, the beauties of this world, the beautiful forms of this world cannot attract one's mind a permanent way. Nor can any one of them vanish all the personality. These are the special features of the transcendental form of the Lord. One was seen 
Once seen that form is not satisfied with anything else, no form in the material world can any longer satisfy the mm. As spiritual beings having eternal relationship with the transcendent form of the Lord, we are life after life, searching after that form of the Lord, and we are not satisfied by any other form of material placement. The so thing with that form. That's why Parishit Vahala, then he came out of the room, he was like, yes, this is Krishna, this is Krishna. So similarly, ignorantly, in the name of Suki, people are actually looking for the beautiful form of the Lord. He is the uh, beauty part of the Lord. But not knowing about Krishna's beauty, people are attracted to so many temporary beauties of the world. And then they are frustrated again. Because the beauty doesn't remain forever. So go by writing it. When what we desire life after life was walked in by Narad Muni and losing sight of him again was certainly a very shock point. And then what is this? I desire to see again the transcendental form of the Lord. But despite my attempt to concentrate upon the heart with eagerness to view the form again, I could not see him anymore. And thus dissatisfied, I was very much aggrieved. So Narad Muni again tried the same way of meditating what he had and how he was darshan. But then after that, he could not fix. And so there is no mechanical process to see the form of the Lord. It completely depends on the causes mercy of the Lord. We cannot demand the Lord to be present before our vision just as we cannot demand the sun to rise and our be light. So we may take darshan, but that power has to reveal that darshan. That's like Anudas. He was attracted by the beauty of Himimba. When the Naurajar called him and he says, Now let's see. Lord Ragnar. We may have taken the Lord Ragnar. Still, <laughs> still not get found for the Lord Ragnar. It's the same Ragnar. Lord Ragnar saw once and then it was like, we don't get affected by anything else, but we don't find the same experience. So it depends on the cause of the Lord. And once he descends and Lord really reveals himself, over time, so then one. One should simply await the opportune moment and go on discharging his personal duty in devotional service. Another one thought that the Lord could be seen again by the same mechanical process which was successful in the first attempt, but in spite of his utmost endeavor, he could not make the second attempt successful. The Lord is completely independent of all obligation. He can simply be bound up by the tie of unalloyed devotion. And he pleases, being satisfied with the sincere attempt of devotion, depending completely on the mercy of the Lord, then he may be seen out of his. Own account. So there's a role of sadhana. What is the role? Sincere attempt to sincere attempt of devotional service to satisfy the Lord. That also is depending completely on the mercy of the Lord. So if you remember Sinaji Swamiji's class, how did that what is the title? Akin Chanatva and but the basic theme was. That Lord, mercy is all in all. The whole thing, if you see, the thing was that it is not by our endeavor and our Pala Gumar. Pala Gumar. But they have a role being satisfied with the sincere attempt of devotional service. That also done depending completely on the mercy of the Lord. It's not that, my dear Lord, I will chant in a way that I will capture you. No, I am able to chant also because of your mercy. But chanting also depends on you. It's not that I serve you such a way that I will capture you. Now, serving you also depends on you. So even to practice sadhana bhakti, we depend on the Lord. We understand that we are able to practice bhakti also by the grace of God, by the mercy of God. So practicing bhakti sincerely by the mercy of the Lord, then the Lord becomes satisfied that he can reveal it. When no mechanical process, even Prabhupada writes, you must have read it there in the first chapter, first chapter only. It is not by the mechanical process of hearing and chanting that one can oblige the Lord to do. But not only this, but hearing chanting also. And only by the Lord. Yeah. But then one may say, let me not do anything. The Lord says, no. When he pleases being satisfied with the sincere attempt, Attempts are not bringing success in themselves. Attempts are satisfying the Lord, that satisfaction is making the Lord realize. Right? So, this is very important to understand. We understand this. Nothing is done to achieve something. 
It's not a direct process when we do something and achieve something. But we do something, we practice devotional service, even we do our service, not for achieving the result, we do our service for pleasing the Lord. And the Lord will please the awards in so This understanding can make one free from fruitive mentality. Otherwise, fruitive mentality is such a big obstacle. We think, I did it, I got it. I am the doer of this. I get the, I should take the credit of it. No. A whole person devotion service is simply an attempt to satisfy the Lord. And that is why there is no competition with anyone. How many books are distributed? How much funds are collected? How many boys are in mentees or facilities? How many boys have you got for Krishna? There's nothing to do. It's all endeavor for only one thing to satisfy the Lord. So that there's no competition. He can satisfy the Lord, we can satisfy the Lord. And Lord is satisfied not by the external achievement, Lord is satisfied by our intensity of desire to satisfy him. That's what makes one thing so special and that's what I should say. This is the thing. This is the thing. This is the thing. This is the thing. the thing. This is the 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 and how it is not that we are trying to celebrate somebody who doesn't care for us, who is not bothered, and he's like a you know tyrant, he's like a what do you say that? Dictator. Not as any. God is very compassionate. He's all merciful. He's Bhakta Vasan. So we are not trying to please somebody artificially. We are not trying to please a dictator or a tyrant or somebody like that. We are trying to please somebody who's already. Looking for the opportunity to get pleased to the medium of a spiritual master for a right way. So, as I say, I do say, Bhagavan could be pleased, and I exhort to please them. No, pleasing Lord is natural dharma for us. He's a root. Mama, you have a show? You have a look at your Buddha's hand. We have a relation. Now we have forgotten that relation. So, we are trying to bring ourselves back in that relationship. Lord is waiting. Prabhupada writes that Lord is more eager to take us back to God than we are eager to. Right? Must have read 1.2.7. So knowing that, one should feel completely relaxed, satisfied. But we are very enthusiastic and determined to make an attempt to please the Lord. One was the qualification of the Lord to get the mercy of Ram on the journey. We call this one thing. <laughs> so, because he was powerful, Acharya, that's why he could take that, that level of realization. Oh, see, Dhanudra's got mercy, definitely. Dhanudra's is also a great personality. We all, we all are in the same position. We are all identified by Shila Prabhupada, given that opportunity. But he has that intensity. Can any one of us do that for women also? He has that intensity in another direction. Yeah. Really? The whole procession. Whole procession, somebody can hold an umbrella from the lady. That means he was quite intense, even there. That's <laughs> in the intense. We are not intense anywhere. <laughs> Sometimes, as devotees also, some devotees are very intense in their material aspect. So when they come to devotion, they are very intense here also. We are lukewarm people. They are not interested here, they are somewhat something around Gadi. So, so we actually we have the seed one. Founder Acharya means one who is finding people. Founder. He found us. That's why he's founder Acharya forever. For everyone is the founder Acharya. He's the one who is who finds us. So we have that same thing. Same process we have, which process is followed by all the Acharya. So why are this question? Because we stress on our seat. So many times people think that more mercy is available in Radha Kundi. Something like that. Some notions are people have. So more mercy is in Radha or some, See, some sense are there. When he pleases being satisfied with the sincere attempt of devotion service, depending completely on the mercy of the Lord, then he may be seen out of his own accord. That satisfaction, how to satisfy the Lord, that cannot be concocted by one's mind. That how to satisfy the Lord in our current situation, that is guided by the spiritual master form. That is the Yasya Prasada, Bhagavad Prasada, Yasya Prasada, Nagati Putos. So, the spiritual master says you go to Radha Kund and do the 
bhajan there, then it's wonderful. One will attain perfection there. The teacher also says that you go to New York and teach there, you'll attain perfection there. It's an order of the teacher master which guarantees us the pleasure. Just the prasadam, nagati kutu. So those who try to overrule the order of the spiritual master by quoting his scripture, by quoting things, mm -hmm. then they are not mature in their understanding. They may look old, they may have dadi, they may have tattoos, they may have everything. Actually, they have not understood. Mm -hmm. That's the order of the spiritual master is connect the jiva to Krishna. Otherwise, jiva is in the material realm, in the material consciousness. And Krishna is in the spiritual world. The link between the two is made by the spiritual master. He's a confidential servant of Krishna, but he's carrying Krishna Kripa, Krishna Kripa Murti, and he's giving that Kripa to the Divas. Sanchar Dawar Gandhita Loka, Pranaya Karun Ganayana. He's ocean, ocean will not come to, you know, even Puna City ocean will not come, all that is 130. In Puna it will not come, what to say going to Delhi, but cloud, taking the water from the same ocean. Not only come to Pune, it will go to Rajasthan, it will go to Delhi, it will go to Himalayas also. So similarly, the spiritual master who makes the link between Krishna and the Jiva. He teaches Jiva the process by which Lord should be satisfied. And the way the confidential associate of the Lord, Kintu Prabhuriya Priya Yavatasa. The way the confidential associate of the Lord, he is carrying the power of attorney of the Lord. So that is why satisfying the self realized spiritual master tantamount. To see Krishna face to face, Shri Prabhupada writes in the fourth chapter. Mm -hmm. Satisfying the spiritual master is tantamount to seeing the Lord face to face. That is the meaning of seeing the Lord. On one's own, one can never see. So that is the process of that. Seeing my attempts in that lonely place, the personality of Godhead to transcend into all mundane darshan. I spoke to me with gravity and pleasing word just to me to get my So Narmuni had one darshan. Uh, he was desperately trying to all this, but then uh, not all seeing the attempt. The Lord cannot be approached by words, it was to me. I had an experience with sweet sounding words by my ears. Because Narada had bhakti arising from Vaidhi Sadhana, he had realization of the sweetness of the Lord's fragrance, beauty, and speech in his present body. And the complete experience means other kind of sweetness like touch and taste would come in his future spiritual body that is said the day. By this, he could hear the sound, the Lord removed all types of lamentation and suffering, which had arisen by not seeing him. The Prabhupada quotes that God is beyond the approach of mundane words and and yet by his father's mercy, one can have to his senses to hear him or speak. So, so this is a very great subject matter. Many places it will come. In the prayers of Vedas personified in the 10th canto, I think 89th chapter, there also it comes that how can this word glorify in one's own Lord? How can the Lord be glorified by the mundane song? That's a big description, multiple places in Shana Bhagavad. But ultimately, because everything is in the energy of the Lord, the Lord desires to bestow mercy in any way, then nobody can stop. Actually, Lord can be pursued by spiritual sense one. But it's up to the Lord. If the Lord wants to make oneself visible to someone, he can make, you cannot stop him. Everyone could see him when Krishna was there. Everyone can see pure devotee. But uh, one can understand the glories of the pure devotee and take the benefit only when one hears about it. Only one has, one has developed affection for him, attachment for him. So, uh, this is Lord's inconsolable energy. Once upon whom his mercy is bestowed, can hear him. And the Lord was pleased with Narayana, therefore, the necessary strength was invested in him so that he could hear the Lord. It is not however possible for others to pursue directly the touch of the Lord during the professionally stage of regulated devotional service. That means Vaidhi Sadhanamati, it was a special gift for Narayana. When he heard the pleasing words of the Lord, the feeling of separation were to some extent mitigated. A devotee in love with God feels always the pangs of separation and is therefore always enveloped in transcendental ecstasy. He was always another the demonstrating principles which are applicable for practitioners. Two limitations, taste and touch. And one with them with three experiences. He could smell the Lord with his nose, 
and he could see the Lord within his, within his inner eyes, and now he could hear the Lord. So he experienced the Lord here. And hear the Lord. Antasmin Janmani Bhavan, Ma Ma Zastum Tiharati. Avipakwa Kashayana, Dudrasho Aham Suyomita. Two things he said. Avipakwa Kashayana, this one fault is telling. Dudrasho Aham Suyomita. So, just like Prabhupada said, the Lord uses the devotees as an instrument to teach the people in general. Like Arjuna was not revealed, but the Arjuna was used as an instrument to teach the world. Similarly, here, Slavishanka is now clearly right that Narasimha was qualified to have the show of the Lord. But God did this to him to increase his intensity of prema, to make that uh, you know, prema in the infant stage to prema in adult stage. So, so immature to mature. So Lord disappeared for that. Just like Gopi, when Krishna disappeared, then Krishna said, Oh, you are proud. That's why I disappeared. But actually, Gopi had no side. Because the whole deal of why Krishna disappeared, if he if, if disappeared because of, they were proud, then why did he come back and say that, you know, I cannot pay back your debt even within the lifetime of Brahma? Mm -hmm. If you're correcting them, to rectifying their fault. So why should we say that? <laughs> so I don't know what the point. He wanted to glorify the gopis. I wanted to show, demonstrate the love of the gopis for the entire world. To glorify the gopis and take a subordinate position. That was the reason. So similarly here, now the Lord disappeared, not because of disqualification of Narada, but they are referring to the disqualification which may be there in the heart of a practicing gopi. Narada did not happen. Another is telling that rule, the Lord is telling Narada that. So I said, I clarified. And the Lord spoke, I regret that during this lifetime you are not going to see me anymore. Those who are incomplete in service. And those who are not completely free from all material things, they are hardly see me. These two things are there, one with incomplete in service and not completely pro material. So, no further let's explain that. This is an address made out of affection. In this birth, having the body of practitioner, you cannot see me. And it is able to those faulty practitioners, yoga, whose contamination such as lust has not been burned. The Jew has mentioned that some person purifies themselves but remains in Sattva Guna and thus are attached to living in the body. The intention here is to say, I allowed myself to see you, therefore, you are not a faulty practitioner. Lord showed him the words. Mm -hmm. So Lord showed him once to intensify his affection. Yeah. But he's telling in general that uh, those who are faulty practitioners, who yogi now, whose contamination are not here burnt up, then I'm not visible to And Prabhupada says, uh, there's no trace of a tinge of materiality in his person, in the Lord's society. And thus one who has the slightest tinge of material affection cannot approach him. Any sort of material affection. And you Goswami said, the beginning of devotion service starts from the point when one is free from at least two forms of matter more, namely, That's And this is the Nishtha state. In Nishtha, this is what I think. One becomes established in Sattva Guna state. And Kama Lova Dayasche, he becomes free from that. That means one must be free from the desire for sanctification and Ever is for sensitivity. And barren mode of nature is goodness, and to be completely free from all material things is to become free from the mode of goodness also. Serve the audience of God in a lonely forest is considered to be in the mode of goodness. One can go out in the forest to attain spiritual perfection, but that does not mean one can see the Lord for the all material attention will be situated on the plane of transcendence, which will have the devotee get in personal touch with the personality of. Lord. The best method is that one should live at a place where the transcendental form of the Lord is virtual. The temple of the Lord is a transcendental place where the forest is a materially good habitation. And you find devotees always recommended to worship the deity of the Lord, Archana, rather than going to the forest to search out of the Lord. Devotion to the begins from the person of Archana, which is better than going out in the forest. Right. Attachment to moral goodness is not Prabhupada used to say that if your service is in a city, and staying in a village, whatever the child, under a tree, that is self-related. 
And if you're told to stay in a tree, then it's, it's very luxurious in a, luxurious in a palace. It depends on what service you require. So far, was such an achievement that he has a very broad range, very broad vision to engage people as per their uh, natures, as per their tendencies. And also to give opportunity to all the conditions so to get attracted to something or other. Some people get attracted to Harina, some people get distribution, some for temple festivals. So 1974 onwards, Lakota made a lot of emphasis on farm community based. Because uh, he understood that to live a simple life of people in city but devoted also not peace. So his concept was that people should live in farm community, everything should be done by devotees. All morning programs should be there, and then the devotees should grow their own food, grow their own flowers, have their own milk by keeping the cows, and have fruits, flowers, grains, and so they did take care of children and then wanted to create a model of self sufficiency for devotees. Because when devotees work like Kalmis outside, it's hard work. They don't get time to do anything. This world is not easy to earn money. If people earn a lot of money, they have to go early in the morning, 7 o'clock sometimes, come back at 10 p.m. When do you send your rounds? <laughs> when do you do any seva or any stuff? So, so what is one service? I should not have one own personal choice too much. Yeah. And sometimes you say, oh, cities are polluted, village life is good, good breeze, good air. Well, that is all good, provided that we are instructed to be there, told to be there. If you are told to distribute books at traffic signal where there's food and there is smoke, that is built as. Body may become dirty, but the heart will be purified because they follow the instruction. And if you're told to go in the farm community, but we think city life is so nice, AC is there, food fan is there, electricity is all the time there, running water is there, here's the sun is <laughs> So the main thing is, you know, to be at a place where one can follow the instruction, the instruction is given. Okay, you know, one practical question. So this service, when we have service, so I, I come across one uh, practical example that, that uh, the famous devotee went to somewhere who is uh, want to means giving a big class there. So no one he, he don't know anyone, but they are inviting because he is famous personality. They arrange uh, for him there is a proper preaching, and so that preaching will happen. But they also request him to take home at their home, take food at their home. So in that case, they arrange for him without onion garlic uh, food. So for the sake of preaching, can the preacher do that because he has the duty to preach. So in some uh, spaces, there is a uh, preaching opportunity. Big people is inviting to giving facility of organizing big hall uh, in that case. So. In that case, is it allowed or not? Yes, let me, I, I want to just push. Actually, this thing can be specifically asked to spiritual master also, because sometimes these standards vary. Uh, the spiritual master, if he gives his blessing, then blessings will protect. Okay. In general, you know, any food which is cooked by a non practicing devotee mm -hmm. is not the best, especially for a grown child. So, Prabhupada wanted that. You know, in our temples and ashrams, second initiated devotees cook for deities and devotees, not only for deities, devotees also. <laughs> so when Brahmana initiated people are cooking, they're going to be supposed to be very good. <laughs> 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 like, so the devotees should uh, take bhoga, which is cooked by devotees for the pleasure of the Lord, then offer to the Lord with devotion, then take in a vision. Even the consciousness should be that we are cooking for the Lord. Even the cooks in the kitchen, main kitchen. Although they're cooking a big quantity, mm. but Krishna can eat any quantity. It is not that they are going to go to the house and eat a plate for one kid. They can skin it. Go over the Puja Krishna demonstrated that he can eat any of it. Mahaprakar Tila Mahapur demonstrated that he can eat any of it. Jagannath is eating all the time. What we may be eating in one week in our temple, Jagannath eats in one day. The so Lord has no limitation. Even while cooking in main kitchen, devotee kitchen, a cook should have questions that are you cooking for the Lord only. Not that the quantity is more than supply. Of course, we have a count and all those things, the logistics are there, but the consciousness is still there. It is all cooked for the Lord. But because there is a practical difficulty of putting all these big, big vessels in front of the Lord, so we are 
you know, keeping a portfolio of that. But in Janganapuri, whatever is cooked is offered. Whatever is cooked is offered. So that should be the conscious. Now, for the sake of reaching, if we go to a new place, that one has to first talk to the organizer and say, this is our standard. I have seen there are two provinces I know. One is uh, Devanul Pandit Prabhu, and then Rajasri Prabhu. And one of them will run it through. Now they carry their own store. They cook. They will go for a program, they will cook themselves and they will treat the organizer also. I will cook and food. <laughs> they cook. They carry their turn. Sit with them. Yeah. And they'll say, okay, you get some uh, you know, vegetables, you get some grains, we'll cook and eat. And one they carry an assistant who will cook. So that they are happy that they are getting. In the early time also, early time there was Pakka Brahmana though. In Delhi was out of question. Like Jagannath Mishra received this Brahmana. He was carrying the Gopal Shari Ram Shila. Mm -hmm. And so what does the Brahmana say? I will go. I will go. Mm -hmm. I will Still I will go. So there are many Brahmanas who used to take only roots and food and others who used to take food. They used to cook themselves. Because cooking, they are a connection function. What is food we eat? Just like I am with the one in Right. Now, for the sake of preaching, how much we can adjust? That adjustment cannot come from our own understanding. That adjustment should come from a higher person who has the power right. to, you know, take the uh, whatever is there in between. <laughs> he can adjust that. He has the power by his instruction to report. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, not. But we can adjust because people will feel happy about it. Man. See, Sadhu is a standard. Eh? So, you know, the, the Jain Sadhu, they don't eat anything for four months. After four months, you just give them one drop of water, you know, the body like that. Pond get number one. Us ko pani bilane ko milta hai. So, so most karte hain pani wani nahi shudte. Woh sewe tapas se rehta hai. Jain ne zaroori paas of tapas se. Kis ko bilane? Pani bilane ke liye. Jain Sadhu. Jain Sadhu ko chhatur maas baad fast break ke liye. So koi bolega pachat saal, ek karod, dos karod. Aisa competition hota hai. And they'll give two crores and then Jain guest houses are maximum. Every highway you'll find Jain guest houses. They walk less, they don't use uh, vehicles. It's still, still today. They walk. Walk carrying, how much walk carrying? So, how much they need? 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 So, sadhus are known for their austerity, not for their strength. So, sadhus is strict. It will appreciate it more than when you easily use up to the rest. So, we can make a middle way by which we say, okay, yes, you know, we have a devotee, we will cook for us in your home, we will cook, we will clean the kitchen, cook ourselves. Or if you want to cook, you could be the item in this way, we will offer. Whatever is the standard, there are a lot of details. Okay. It's not that for us they cook, but what do they take? Do they take one in garlic? Do they take other prohibited items? What are their habits? Sometimes they are traditional Vaishnavas. Traditional Vaishnavas, some are, some are like Vallava Chari Sampradaya, some are Shri Sampradaya. And in such houses, even if you take their no harm. But if they are proper karmi, you know, okay, it's a matter of consciousness, not just actually. So one should be very careful. How much risk to take for preaching? How much to compromise the standard for preaching? This has to be in discussion with Someone for whose pleasure we are speaking. Like now we are in Pune, that's who last meeting is at. <laughs> no, Brahmacharya should go to any Grassal house. <laughs> Initiated, second initiator, Grassal house. Yeah, final name. Final name, what? 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 Final name, No, come here, it's an ancient devotee, and the Rajbogi is also made. But he made that law. And he said, I am the president, and you are all trying to serve and please me. Why we you lower the problem? And it's supposed. You know, WhatsApp, you may use WhatsApp for service. Uh, president, no WhatsApp. No WhatsApp. Because ultimately, how are you pleasing? You are pleasing my guru through some system, na, hierarchy. So we should not have personal attachment over and above whatever way they want us to please. So the teacher must say, okay, yeah, for the sake of preaching, we want to take a cultivation. Okay, you can do that. Fine, you can do that. But it requires consultation. You know, this head of So, in present life, it is completely free from all matter entering. The Narayana does not go into the forest. Professing that life, he went to forest because he was attracted to mode of goodness and he saw the Lord. But this life, what he does, he does not go to forest. He travels from one planet to another to convert man, God, Kinnar, Gandharva, Rishi, Muni, and all others to become devotees of the Lord. 
He can convert any place into Vaikuntha, but he goes. So he convert man like Bragali, he went to forest to convert Bragali, convert gods, you know, Gandharvas, Rishi, like Nalkuel, Manipuri, Mandar, and Vilanka, Kalsa. And by his activities, he has engaged many devotees like Prahlad Maharaj, Dhanu Maharaj, in the transcendental service. Your devotee is Lord Jesus, who follows in the footsteps of the great devotees and engage in his whole time in glorifying the Lord. Such pleasing process transcendental to all material qualities. Mm -hmm. So, in completeness of service and material contamination. These are the disqualification for seeing the Lord. Narada was not having this disqualification. God wanted to intensify his prayer, such as he was But Prabhupada takes those tips and tells us that we should be free from all material contamination. And it's a great. Incomplete. And complete in our service. Further reflection. Our Lord is further saying, Oh, but just one. You have only seen once my person. And this is just to increase your desire for me because the more you hang up for me, the more you'll be freed from all material desires. And no taste. One. First, somebody has to give a taste. Na? Like this sugar can use. <laughs> Cold, salt, and lemon. <laughs> so, what taste? Maybe it's still the time when I have not come to kitchen, no? and it's like, okay. Kitchen man, I can't do it. 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 I so, which is about then if money is lost, then you become very desperate. The example, or like now we are sitting here. So, Bahad is not the real hard. So, we do my Wapas Ashram Jang is good. Right? Till the time we are not having class here, so everything was okay. <laughs> Somehow we are managing. But once we get some taste, then the hankering increases. So, Vishan Bumsa works in other ways. Yeah, the Vishan Bumsa Sangha says Shubhajaja, but similar thing happened in the spiritual life that once you meditate on the spiritual cause, then the intensity or desire or anger will achieve it increases. So, God is saying, I showed myself once to produce a desire in you to see me. The devotee is so desiring me, gradually become freed from all material desire. Another is saying, but just show yourself once more to me. God is applying. Seeing me only once, not many times, is enough to produce desire for me. One time. I only slight increase in longing, Prima will not develop to that state of usefulness in a person having somewhat weaker grip. My rule is that I show myself one time only to a person practicing in his present body who has developed Prima. In fact, the state of Prima in the Sadhaka's body matches to a youthful state in the Siddha Deha by an increase of Prima arising from longing and separation. That's why the Goswami is saying, He Radhe with the Jesus. That is what Prima allows the devotee to see me constantly and serve me directly. I alone and not my devotee knows the process of fulfilling the desires of my devotee. To simply desire me, even without having seen me, will become you will become free from all desires from my uh, This statement does not actually apply to Narada since he did not have any mental desire, being at the level of Prima already. But saying this, the Lord shows the nature of devotion. Additionally, by saying this, the Lord increases the humility of Narada. Says, the living being cannot be that kind of desire. It's not a dead store. He must be working, thinking, feeling, and will. But when he thinks, feels, and will, materially, he becomes entangled. And conversely, when he thinks, feels, and will, from the service of the body, he becomes gradually freed from all entanglement. The more a person is engaged in the transcendental service of the Lord, the more he acquires a thankful part. That is the transcendental nature of the service. Mental service is a cessation, where the spiritual service of the Lord is neither cessation nor end. So after doing any service, and we were mind is thinking, where will I get to do this again? And you actually done service mm -hmm. in a way that has actually please the Lord and transform it. Or which kind of laga ki tam ho gaya. Life mein kabhi to bhaga nahi hai. Piyush ki par ho gaya hai. Abhi kuch hari naam, motivation, prosperity, naam aur kuch. So, so. That is not the same. Success of service is that when service is complete, we we, we miss it. Feel that when will I get to do it again? That is service. That so, might be due to our material inclinations also. Yeah, the, the we see service as a material engagement. Huh? 
Is his service as a, as a means of satisfying our material desires, uh, yeah. aspiration, likings? We don't see it as a means to please the Lord. In the mm -hmm. If you see service as a means to please the Lord, and, even, and one service is as good as another service, but it is a means to please the Lord. Whichever way the Lord wants to please, that's fine. But when we service, when we see service as a means to satisfy our own liking, then there's a difference. Because I like one thing, I don't like other. Then it becomes a difference. So, that's the transcendent nature of worldly service. That matter service and satiation is spiritual service. Neither satiation nor end. One can go on increasing and caring for the loving transcendent service of the Lord, and yet he will not find satiation. The intense service of the Lord, one can experience the presence of the Lord transcendent. Therefore, seeing the Lord means being engaged in a service because the service and his person are identical. Seeing the Lord means being engaged in a service. And we know that famous statement of Srila Prabhupada quotes this little much. What is it? No, do not try to see God. Try to serve Him in such a way that He wants to. He wants. That's a profound statement. In summary of the entire Vedanta. <laughs> because people want to go to Radha Kund to see Krishna. Yet our prophet is saying that they are not interested in seeing, they are interested in serving. Because being engaged in service, uh, because his service and his person are identical. In serving, we, we definitely glorify his beauty, glorify his qualities. But then, commitment for serving. Shri Prabhupada was in Vrindavan, which is our destination. He met his Guru Maharaj at Radha Kund, the property of the body of Vishnu. But what was his mood? What is Chaitanya Mahaprabhu? Did Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came and settled in here? He came, he stayed for some time at the bank of Shamabu. Then he went back and he performed Harinam Sangit and he traveled throughout South India, he traveled to Jari Bhutan Forest. He took sannyas to preach. So, the Vadiya Vaishnava mission is the mission of compassion. You know, we assist with Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and his assistant in their service for the poor conditions. And doing that service as a servant of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, that gives us access to the mother, the rest mother, the of Vrindavan. And this secret is not known to anyone other than Vadi Vaishnava. Indulam Sanyamara says that one who dives in the ocean of preaching for the Bhagavad Gita Shila Prabhupada, he will come on the surface of Radha Krishna Lila and Vrindavan. Right from the book also, that one who engages in assisting to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in a service to other conditions, that person will be blessed by Shivati Radhavani to understand the Madhuri frame of Vrindavan. This thing cannot be assessed, one, achieved. One can be in Vrindavan, it's not achieved. The whole entire process of bhakti, the entire realization of bhakti is not achieved. That's the first thing to understand. It is not about a matter of physically being in some place or doing one thing or another. It's a matter of consciousness. What is that consciousness? That consciousness is the consciousness of utter humility, feeling oneself totally insignificant, feeling oneself totally dependent on the mercy of Hari Guru In that mood, how can one deny the order and instruction of the spiritual master in the West? How can one do it? What, what example of Rachel is setting? So Krishna Kalyan was not ready to write. And Hanja Shagur is telling him, and he goes to all the Vaishnavas and all the deities and asks their blessing. And when you know, Mother Mom started for offer an Agya Mala, you can say the Agya Mala. That's the example. Sir. And then he's writing this great retreat. At the end of every chapter, he's writing Rupa Raghunath Bhadir, Ahu Muraz, Chaitan Chaitan, Krishna. And in between, so many times he's saying, I'm old, I'm lame, I'm suffering from the boils of envy, and my heart is, you know, filled with so much envy and hardness. But still, I'm writing this in the right. Chaitan Mahaprabhu, the Supreme Lord himself, you know, uh, 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 that Lord, that Lord, while coming to Vrindavan, how much he meets? First he went, he went to in the Ram Kelly and then the other Muslim told him to He went back. And after that, two years he waited. Two years he waited. He is Swarada. He said, no. Uh, what is that? 
ಜನ್ಮಾದಿವಸ ಅಭಿಜ್ಞಾನ ಇನಿಶಿಯೇಷನ್ ಡೆಮಿಗೋಡ್ ಸಿಸ್ಟಮ್ ಯು ವಾಂಟೆಡ್ ಟು ಗೋ ಟು ಇನಿಶಿಯೇಷನ್ ಆಫ್ಟರ್ ಆಫ್ಟರ್ ಗೆಟಿಂಗ್ ಸೈನ್ಯಸ್ ನಿತ್ಯಾನ ಗೂಡ್ ಡಯಾಬಿಟಿ ಆಫ್ಟರ್ ಕಮ್ ಟು ಪುರಿ ವೆಂಟ್ ಟು ಸೌತ್ ಇಂಡಿಯಾ ಹಿ ವಾಂಟೆಡ್ ಟು ಗೋ ರಾಮ್ ಕೆಲಿ ಸಲ ಅದರ ಉಸಾಮಿ ಸೆಂಟರ್ ಬ್ಯಾಕ್ ಅಂಡ್ ನಾವ್ ಜಗನ್ನಾಥ್ ಪುರಿ ಸೋ ಮೆನಿ ಇಯರ್ಸ್ ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಇಮ್ಯಾಜಿನ್ ಹಿ ವಾಸ್ ಹೌ ಮೆನಿ ಇಯರ್ಸ್ ಇ ಲಿವ್ಡ್ ಇನ್ ದಿಸ್ ಆಶ್ರಮ ಆಫ್ಟರ್ ದಿಸ್ ಇನಿಶಿಯೇಷನ್ ವಿ ಹ್ಯಾಡ್ ಟು ಸಮ್ ಕ್ಯಾಲ್ಕುಲೇಟ್ ಅಟ್ ಲೀಸ್ಟ್ 3 4 ಇಯರ್ಸ್ ಸೋ ಮೆನಿ ಇಯರ್ಸ್ ವಾಸ್ ಬೇಟ್ ಆಫ್ಟರ್ ಫೈನಲಿ ಆಫ್ಟರ್ ದ ಪರ್ಮಿಷನ್ ಆಫ್ ಆಲ್ ದಿ ಡಿವೋಟೀಸ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಮಾಪು ಸೆಟ್ಟಿಂಗ್ ದಟ್ ರೂಲ್ who can be you know just be qualified to go to vrindavan by his own choice stay here stay there to do pass the program and follow karma bhakti so people who immaturely go here and there they do not have an understanding of how the process works they think it's like material thing i can study and i can grab i can write and i can attain the grades <laughs> not like that it doesn't work like that works is a part of grace the grace comes by sincere attempts to please the lord through pleasing the spiritual master and the west but cannot uh, please the lord without pleasing the spiritual master and the west of that is why when one becomes independent minded and one does the physical things and one thing individually i attend for it ye log wo bhakti karne wale log bhakti kar rahe hain aur aap log log baithe hain ekdam krishna leela samne aaye first we got that kuch nahi hoga aur mat jayegi shaadi karke wapas aa jayegi so many kids are there like They don't get rather than they get some <laughs> 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 yes, manifestation <laughs> my potential <laughs> some i know person in my people how are ashun people <laughs> how they feeding better than us that's what the angle of this duty born to serve in his farm they are serving but they got attached to some specific services uh for example they hear the glories of holy name glories of preaching so when there is a need in a project a kind of a dt service is or all of their brahman initiated but they are not willing to do that because that not not inclined although there is a need sometime so uh, they are more inclined in like a preaching and this hours in the preaching morning preaching is the essence some kind of that so we fall sometime dt service short of man for all those there are a lot of brahman initiated but brahman already <laughs> engaged in preaching activities and their and their goal is, is to preach because this is preaching movement so that kind of imbalance also seen so what is the reason of it that's very simple you see we are preaching and we are doing the dt service both under the order of some so who was is the president manager or guru who was the person because you know we are all doing it for someone's benefit that point should always in humble if we forget that point then it gives us agya sukriti it becomes karma away it doesn't even work for you that point should always in humble whom are you trying to please either by sending the holy name or by preaching or by deity worship or by managing whatever so whom are you trying to please we go and discuss so my heart naturally feels more than that for this what is that matter people they understand how to balance things you can say okay you can let it go do that our manmohan shambhu <laughs> Thirty-two rounds of chanting in Boston. Thirty-two rounds of chanting every day. Three duty services doing every day, and then he's going to college, you know, campuses, and they are doing Hindam Sangeet. And just two of them, you can hear from Raghav Sir. And he's gone ready. He comes back. He can do that. And do all that within a day of twenty-four hours. Yeah, five hours of sleep or something like that. Then sometimes cooking for the duty. Everything is doing. Thirty two rounds is doing is serving the deity three hours, going out to cultivate the boys, and then three to four hours is reading. He's reading with cooks, he's reading with boys, he's reading his group that too. So everything is able to do. So we have to know that if we are sincere, Krishna can empower us to do so many things. That our Prabhu, what is his name? Buddha Kesu. One hundred twenty eight rounds every day. Minimum two glasses every day. and do all his chores take for shower take care of his wife i made that i'm so probably so like that right very fire very advanced lady ab to rest lena padta hai sab jata hai but hum garden se karte hain sham sundar ke liye fir hum sote hain thode din probably jab karte hain see 128 rounds 
and it sucks marriage was there then marriage time it ended one minute ago marriage ke time mein to wo sab but we will do it but 128 rounds every day not in a single day 128 round karke apne chaudhri wala ek aise se kar parso kar raha tha wo pura saare aur baje raha ya nahi hai usme it's a matter of genuine taste and empower so that we should do we should know that if we are not able to balance everything then we are not able to very mature and advanced to gain that maturity and advanced one should consult follow that and that will become possible there are many people in this function 64 round and move preaching move to preaching also to be the result because same lord who is trying to please your preaching the same lord whose name you are chanting the same lord is coming in the archa hotel so how can one not have that information it need be If somebody is asked and will say I can't do, that means there is no understanding. Because while chanting or asking, my dear Lord, please engage me in your service. And God is saying, okay, I'll come and offer boga to me. And say, no, 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 I don't have time. So, to put me to the example, no. The lady is, you know, serving the picture of the husband inside. And when he's knocking, you know, we're waiting for him to serve. He's with the person we are serving is waiting at the door. So these are immature understandings. But in any stage of life, we should always consult. That consultation makes the matter perfect. Roper writes that it will come in the 19th chapter of First Canto. No decision, no, no matter how important, it should always be finalized after consulting someone. That makes the matter perfect. So these are details. But the principle is that the Vaishnava, if you're really making them in advancement, oh, yes, he becomes humble. रोजी म्यूट हो गया रोजी म्यूटेड म्यूट म्यूट हरे कृष्ण हमारे चंदन प्रभु होस्ट थे ना कहा गए चंदन प्रो होश नहीं है पहले पहले दिख रहे थे होस्ट एनवीसीसी होस्ट है एनवीसीसी कौन है एनवीसीसी प्रभु जी है ना अरे कॉल रुको क्या है स्नेहल प्रभु कॉल स्नेहल प्रभु है के कौन है स्नेहल प्रभु है और ये है आपके अमित प्रभु किस मैं अमित प्रभु को लगाता हूँ मैं लगा रहा हूँ अमित प्रभु को स्नेहल प्रभु को बोला है वो करवा रहे हैं अनम्यूट अमित प्रभु को लग ही नहीं रहा है स्नेहल प्रभु को बोल दिया मैंने बट अभी तक अनम्यूट क्यों हुआ पता नहीं
एक बार अमित लोग को बोला कभी भी स्नेहल को उन्होंने फोन काट दिया पता नहीं अनम्यूट क्यों नहीं कर रहा है स्नेल पे कुछ करना ट्राई कर रहे थे हाँ लेकिन उसका अनम्यूट तो अभी तक नहीं हुआ ना प्रभु जी हाँ तो मतलब शेयर उनको पता है बट कर नहीं पा रहे कुछ तो हो गया अच्छा ये हरी बोल वो कोच भी नहीं है हो ये भी नहीं है इसलिए नहीं कर पा रहे शायद नहीं वो प्रभु जी के लैपटॉप के पास आए तो थे हाँ अगर हम अनम्यूट कर पा रहे तो वो भी करना चाहिए वही तो हाँ हो गया हो गया ठीक है A serving the devotees for even a short time, your intelligence becomes firmly fixed in me. Sometimes when the Lord says, "Serve me," like He says, "No, man, manava, man, bhakto, madhya dhi, man, navashti." Sometimes order is not right. Now we go there. Just a prasad, a bhagat prasad, a bhagat kripa, a bhagat. A bhagat kripa, a bhagat kripa, a bhagat kripa. Here, so Bhagwan is going to direct you. Man, manava, man, bhakto, madhya dhi, man, navashti. Why me? How the Guru and Bhakti are so far apart? That's why I wonder. So that's a different topic. I've not discussed here. So all four things, if you go in detail, conditions apply. Conditions apply. You read the purport of that verse. Savai Krishna Mana Bazaar. Read the first line of that verse. Thanks. Guruji, in translation, it says by serving the absolute truth. In Parmeshwara Chakravarti saying, by serving the duties of Yeah, it says not such seva. Yeah, so such seva yeah can apply to such means devotee, such means lord also. So both are taking lord, but here is taking the devotee because now when you not yet serve the devotee, so apply your devotee. When you give up this word of low wealth, you become asmashya. By serving the devotee for even a short time, all these you have to develop a strong intelligence and being and giving of the body will come. You see, proper is combining both. Now this is what is next. Serving the absolute truth means rendering service unto the absolute person of God. And how? By what means? Right? Under, Under the direction of the bona fide spiritual master, who is a transparent via medium between the Lord and the new fight devotee. It's inbuilt. When he says mad mana, mad bhakto, mad yaji, he says mad bhakto. But then how he defines mad bhakto? In Agni Purana, what he says, my dear Arjuna, one who says he is my devotee is not my devotee. Hmm. Anusay, the devotee of my devotee is actually my devotee. Yes. Yeah. So like that, all four things you apply, it says it always goes through devotee. Sometimes Krishna just says that, but if you really see the depth of it, like here also, Satsevaya. Satsevaya, okay, even if you take service of the absolute truth of the Supreme Bhagavan Vada, Prabhupada is again connecting how we do that under the direction of one of our discussion master is the transparent via media. And if our devotee has no ability to approach the Absolute person is guarded by the strength of his present day perfect mental senses. Therefore, under the direction of spiritual master, trained in transcendental service of the Lord, and by such training, even for some days, you see, even by and by such training, even for some days, a neophyte devotee gets intelligence. Such transcendental service which leads him ultimately to get free from perpetual inhabitation in the material world and to be promoted to the transcendental world to become one of the liberated associates of the Lord in the kingdom of God. You see, Prabhupada, how much time he gave to this subject? Eleven years he was there. 1966, the Atulis is gone. 1977, it left. How many of us are 11 years? Around 10 years. 11 years was the only time Prabhupada came. And in that also, first two, three years, he was very accessible and available. After that, when he started preaching and you know going worldwide, then he would come once in a year to church. At that time, there was no live broadcast. Tapes would get recorded and tapes would circulate. What class Prabhupada gave here, maybe one week, 10 days later, one will get. So not like that. You can immediately put it on Google Drive and download it. Nothing like that. right? And still, what we were writing, by such training, even for some days, the neophyte devotee get intelligence in such transcendental self. That was the phase of growth. I'm guiding them to follow the process of Krishna and Parmas and guide. And these people are running worldwide movement. They are opening temples, centers, signing devotees, initiation, much more than what 
we do in our place. Mm -hmm. So that was the phase and that was the training from that period. Past persons. Intelligence engaged in my devotion cannot be thought in at any time, even at the time of creation as well as the time of annihilation, your remembrance will continue by I love you. So that was the other question. Now, how is it that you change the body? You change your body and intelligence is lost. I mean, we forget the past. How do we remember the past? So this is the blessing Lord gave that because of intelligence engaged in my devotion, even at the time of creation and annihilation, your remembrance will continue by my love. Said that since the person of Godhead is eternal, intelligence applied in his service or anything done in his relation is also permanent. So this accumulates birth after birth, and the devotee is fully matured. The total service counted together makes him eligible to enter into the association of the person of Godhead. Such accumulation of God's service is never vanquished, but it is still fully matured. And then Neha become natural civil proper guilt that if you stop 10%, you start with the 10% like that. Then that supreme authority personified by sound and unseen by eyes, but most wonderful is taught speaking. Feeling a sense of gratitude, I offered my obeisance to him, going by that. So you're not visible, but words were heard. That the personality of God was not seen, but only heard does not make any difference. The person of God has produced the four Vedas by breathing and is seen and realized through the transcendental sound of the Similarly, the Bhagavad Gita is the sound representation of the Lord. Conclusion is that the Lord can be seen and heard by persistent chanting of the transcendental. After that, what Narabhuni stated now, there are 12 words. We will take tomorrow, we will start with those. No more recaps. Quite a bit of time in setting the room. Tomorrow we will start with Okay. Okay, Tata, bye bye, film. <laughs> Even a BBR, we get records that we'll have it here. <laughs> okay. Foundation Bro, special appearance? No, Bro, I just came here. Oh, okay. Yeah. Prize, prize distribution ceremony. Yeah. 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 Sorry, yeah. Neto. I would love to be physically present for your such realized divine lecture. Please. No, no, no. Yes, I'm happy with all of you. That's all. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Pranjali Prabhu and Jagdish Ramon. Krishna. Krishna Prabhu is observing a Pramansa and everyone's body. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the help of now what it did is the state good was uh the life of the material. But that's... We are in some travel to time, which is coming.